Okay. All right, thank you. I'd like to call the Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021 meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Um, Commissioner Hammer, would you please call the roll? Sure. Uh, Rich Roberts. Here. Ryan Allard. Here. Joseph Hammer here. Jim Hughes. George Oikel. Tom Dean. Tony Homicki. Here. Dave Edwards. Here. Mike Vieira. Here. Dave Drake. Nope. Peter Lambruni. Here. Azim Korkatovic. Hazim's not on anymore. It's Paul Thompson. You know I'm sorry. Who, I'm looking at a, I couldn't find the, the right agenda. I was looking at it. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. And uh, and Paul identifies as Olivia tonight. So. Okay. <laughs> right. So we have six regular members and two alternates. We'll start with that. I see, um, I think I see Tom Dean just got here. So. Yes, um, I'm here. Can you hear me? That will, yes, thank you. That'll make nine and then we're good to go. Um, we have four items on the agenda tonight. Uh, they are all public hearing items. Two of them are going to be uh, carried over to another meeting. Um, so right now I'd entertain a motion to um, continue public hearing 2096Z, which was the Luna Pizza one, uh, to our next meeting, November 16, 2021 at 7 p.m. Okay. Is there a second? Second. And this is at the request of the applicant. It's not me telling people what to do. <coughs> hmm. All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And I would also entertain a motion to take item 3.4 out of order, public hearing 3001-21Z Ocean State Job Lot, and keep that on the table to open the public hearing November 16th, 2021 at 7 p.m. So moved. I'll right. second. Okay, motion by Ryan, second by Tony. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Again, that's at the request of the applicant. Um, I would also now entertain a motion to take item 3.3, .3, public hearing on 3021Z, the Hartford Brewing, Brewing Company, uh, out of order, and take that before item 3.2. So moved. Motion made, Mr. Chairman. Second that. Right. Okay, motion by... Uh, by Tom, second by Mike. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Um, as before, public hearings, the commission uh, will hear from the applicants. We'll have some back and forth with the applicant. Uh, we may have questions, we may have comments. Uh, once that portion of the hearing is over with, uh, we'll open it up to comments from members of the public and try to be a little more economical about how we run the meeting this time just so that we're not here on Thursday, November 4th. Um, once the, uh, the public has had an opportunity to weigh in, um, we'll turn it back over to the commission and the applicant to sort things out if we believe we have enough information to act on the application. At that time, we may close the public hearing and deliberate and take action. If there are, at that time, still open issues that need to be worked out between uh, the applicant and the commission or staff, uh, we may continue the public hearing to a, to a future meeting. But in, in either case, it will be you know, clear to everybody what's going on uh, while that's happening. So I don't know whether everybody had a chance to, uh, to look at the voluminous correspondence and additional documents that we received you know throughout the course of the day in addition to the package we got last week um 
but I think given, you know, given the fact that we had a, a whole lot of stuff kind of dropped in our lap at the last minute, um, I would turn it over first to Peter to kind of summarize where he believes we are in terms of, you know, what information has been provided that we had been sort of looking for at the last meeting, um, you know, what issues might still be open, and then uh, hear from the applicant on what they have kind of made in the way of progress since the last meeting, uh, responses to staff and public comments, and, you know, maybe a, a relatively quick description of the changes that have been made to the site plan or to the um, operational aspects of the plan just so that everybody can kind of get up to speed and, and uh, you know, be aware of what's going on because, you know, I, I don't want I don't want anybody to be at a, a disadvantage or, or anything like that by virtue of not having had an opportunity during the course of their work day to read the materials that have been submitted late. Okay, Rich, you want me to jump in? Sure, please. Could, okay, I, just, so could I just interrupt for one minute here? I, I'm, I've been getting a few texts, Peter, that people are having difficulties getting in this meeting. Apparently that there is a typo on the agenda on the uh, on the meeting code, so I just want to bring yeah. that to your attention. Okay. Uh, yeah, Tom, Tom Dean had that problem too. So. Yeah, in the second set of numbers, it's nine 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 seven instead of just nine nine seven. Correct. So just in case some people send text to you guys. You could just correct so, that for them. Yeah. So Peter, you will you will send them out to the people who are reaching out to you. You can send them. Yeah, the I, have, I, have already. I just okay, wanted great. you to know about that. Okay. Thanks. Um, just um, to give you an update, there were two supplemental packets that went out. Uh, the, one this morning, I think, and, and another later this, this afternoon. And and Paul, I apologize uh, to you because I don't think you're in the full distribution uh, list yet. So you probably got the packet last week, but you may not have gotten the supplemental. So my, my apologies for that. Um, so in terms of um, the information you should have received, um, so I did an updated memo that identified the things that I felt was, were outstanding. The town engineer did the same. We did get a response to my comments. I did not see a response to the town engineer's comments. Um, we did get a, a revised uh, set of plans uh, late this afternoon. Um, so I, I have not myself had a chance to review them because they came in late this afternoon. And obviously, you probably have not uh, either. So there is a revised drawing in, in, in the last packet that came in today. Um, I believe there in one of those attachments, there was a, a signed copy of the parking agreement with Heartseed. So I think that has been uh, resolved. There was also uh, a parking mm -hmm. management plan document that I'm not sure got in the packet that also came in uh, late uh, this afternoon. So uh, we, we need to make a note uh, to discuss that. Uh, we did get a bunch of additional correspondence from uh, neighbors as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, town residents. There were a couple of residents on Church Street that had very specific comments. Uh, so I think you should pay attention to uh, those in particular. There was also a petition uh, submitted against the application, although the petition I, I believe was only signed by four or five people, but there was an effort uh, for a petition to be filed. It, it doesn't meet any um, standing or any special um, conditions that you know warrant you changing your vote, but you should just be uh, aware of that. There is correspondence as well to the town manager regarding uh, the uh, request to lease uh, part of the public right of way for the pat patio, just to keep you up to date on that. Uh, it has been determined by the town engineer that that will have to go to town council. Um, so um, I think they want uh, the PNZ to at least uh, do their thing um, and maybe make a recommendation on that as well before the council will actually vote on it according to the town manager. Um, so I think those are the big items that have come in in the last uh, few days that you should be aware of. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I mean, and, and I, I did try to go through everything and I didn't see the signed 
agreement with Hartseed. I just saw emails talking about what was going back and forth between the parties. So I think that also came in after the last, I, I, I cut it off, I think around um, 4.30 or five o'clock. I wasn't gonna keep sending you guys more information. So I'll let the applicant okay. you. bring you up to speed on any of those outstanding items. Okay, yeah. thank you. I, we, we, did, we did get a contract signed at around 4.45 today. We were waiting on our lawyers. So I, I have the signed contract. All right, so do you want to tell us what progress you've made since the last meeting and um, you know what what if anything is different or in response to the issues that were discussed two weeks ago? Yeah, well, one thing was that I believe the site plan that a lot of the comments were made on were was uh, last session was not the most up to date one. So um, a lot of the comments that that we replied to um, on the com you know the comment sheet were it was on it's on the sheet. So uh, I think there were some comments last time with concerns about the um, the south facing stairs being rehabbed and a uh, the railing brought up to code and simply stated that we we did have that, but I think it's possible that the version that went out on the deadline date didn't have the most updated railing detail. Um, but you should all have that now. So if I recall, most everything that was discussed um, from commissioners was largely covered or we immediately changed. Uh, we took all of Peter's comments and all of Derek, Derek, is it Derek's comment, the engineers, and made changes as such. So. Um, the fences are actually, I guess I must, maybe I'm supposed to share this. I have the plans I can bring up and we I can go over some of those things if that's helpful. Yeah, that would be good. Yep. I, I was not, I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting to, uh, to be on the hot seat this early here. <laughs> um, actually, hold on here. Let me just want to make sure I have the proper full PDF and not just the downloaded. So, all right. Um, yeah, also I have the comments from the engineer. I'm not sure, you said you didn't get those, Peter, is that accurate? Uh, I, we didn't get a response from you or your engineer to his comments, That's, that was my comment. Okay, I'll, I'll let him send those because he will be joining the call shortly. He is, I think it's a, you know, old Saybrook town meeting right now. Um, but he should be on fairly soon anyway. Uh, I'll let him comment when, when he gets in about his responses, but in general, I think they resolve most any outstanding thing that wasn't quite done. Um, and let me just open up these plans. Um, hope and that's it. All right, now I should be able to share. All right, you guys see that okay? Yep. All right, so let me, I think I should probably zoom in a little here, huh? What do we got, but, all right. So in the site plan world, uh, if you, can you see my cursor okay? Yes. So the town engineer asked that we um, bring the fence back away from the sidewalk because there was, um, you know, there's concerns about the width of the sidewalk and those big trees kind of make it crowded there and we have no problem with that. So we brought the fence back, uh, um, you know, if, what to onto, I guess, our property line. Um, and then as you see, we continue the fence down like we had it because of our uh, request in to extend a lease for that extra area. Um, the way we would ask the town to please handle that, if, if you will, is, uh, and this came up in the meeting with the town engineer and, and I, Peter, I think you were there, but we kind of basically said like, let's, you know, as Peter just said, um, you know, I would love for you to consider approving the patio uh, for my property line area 
at which point, obviously, if we don't get any further approval, we will build the fence on our property line. Otherwise, if we are granted the lease through the town council, we would like to uh, build it as drawn. So I would like a conditional approval, as I believe the terminology they were asking for. Um, and again, I do apologize because I'm I'm not the guy who drew this. I'm just the guy who paid for it. Um, not to uh, sell myself short. But um, we also added some additional plantings. So there is um, some, let me, I guess you can probably see it over here by the, um, by these stairs. And the point of this is in brewing, we use hops a lot. Um, I am, I checked with, with, um, with the folks, uh, I guess, again, it was the engineer regarding sight lines and concerns about that. And uh, what I'm going to do, hops grow very tall and they grow on strings. It's just little, little um, twines, like bailing twine. And we'll be growing some hop plants along the edge here that we will string up to the roof. And what that allows us to do is to create additional visual separation for the folks who live down Church Street. Um, I, I had took some pictures, which uh, I'm happy to show you. I just didn't quite insert them into my deck yet. I was going to do that during the first two hours of the meeting. <laughs> but I, I can pull them up pretty quick. And I, I put the, how the hot plants grow. Um, and, and it's, you know, they're really an incredible plant because they grow very quickly. And they're, they're a local, they're an indigenous plant. Um, in fact, there were hops growing on this property two years ago, I was told, when they last did the back fence line. And uh, they've just been there forever, probably from as long ago as co colonial times. They've been used in brewing and for other uses, they're a preservative, a natural preservative. Um, we did add some additional detail over here on the west property line along the fence. Um, we have a we put in a planting plan to put on the uh, to put the major wheeler honeysuckle in. Um, I mean, I I I just we we get, went with I think it was every two feet. And that's a good spacing for that plant. So it's we just added that additional detail, which we understood that some folks were interested in. Um, trying to think, well, we it, there was a question about whether or not we would have a trash receptacle in the outside area. And so, in order to be, I guess, not only have an outdoor trash receptacle, um, but we also added just a, a little countertop there that would be a temporary call it like a hutch where i would be able to have the wait staff keep necessary supplies as they're serving the patio uh, but also for them to have their own area for the trash I, I really don't i mean if customers want to throw things out they're welcome to but i want to be able to obviously manage that and we have the dumpster just around the back there to empty it into um Let's see. I think that was most of it. I think the engineer had some comments that there weren't elevations uh, spiked out for these um, these dry wells. So you can see that now there are elevations, as in this one here is 42.6 feet, and this one's 43.4. So while they were close to the gradient lines, now we've just been a little bit more precise um, as per his recommendation. Um, and there was uh, one sewer pipe that wasn't properly labeled in, in terms of its material um, on the plan. It's a it's the the actual sanitary sewer line. Uh, just it didn't have a material listed what it was made out of. So we added that. Um, there are a few other things that are more in the I hate to say the minutia of it. It makes no sense to me, but like these charts that are they're specifically formatted. There was uh, several different areas around uh, land coverage that needed some additional detail um, that they have been added. Um, I guess there was no real additional information there, just uh, that it's a requirement from the town. So uh, we've done that. I trying to think of what else might have been on this list, but I'm going to move a little bit down here so you can see I think there were some questions because uh, it was said that we did not have some of these details so you can see here's the fence detail that we had uh, this was there I don't know if you guys saw that last time um, same with the trees um, and 
it goes into pretty much the catch basins, how they're designed. Um, and then this here is a little bit more detail. The engineer wanted sight lines when exiting the driveway so that he could be certain that the driveway was safe. I guess in recent years it's been added to code that uh, we have to have for any new curb cuts there this needs to be done so shazam uh i think we had previously mentioned and i don't know yeah i don't i think i have to go back up a page or two that we are asking there is currently right here a sign that says no parking from here to the corner we are um asking that sign be moved you know 20 feet here to near our curb cut uh, with that sign being here no parking between here and the corner it ensures a clean sight line for anyone turning onto church street heading towards maine uh, the immediate neighbor property uh, the 8 16 to 18 church street property their curb cut is quite close to ours and there will there will be a grate there in the future because we're moving the grate so that is a no parking area as as is um, and it, we don't expect anyone to be parking there um, as there is already the no parking sign here so the first place a car would park would be you know i'll say just past the the property the the curb cut for 16 to 18 church street and that goes back to these arrows showing that um he's got 227 feet of sight line when there are cars there so indicating that it, it is generally considered safe especially in a 35 mile zone which it is um we added uh there were a lot of questions and or comments regarding uh we'll say the deferred maintenance of the last 25 years so we added the notes on the elevation so that you could see the intent for that so repair and paint the existing trim uh, and being realistic during the timeline that the the uh, the, um, the cornice will not be getting painted until spring at the earliest. But, you know, we've at least identified, you know, the, the intent to repair and paint that cornice. Um, the fire escape is still going to remain closed, not in use. Uh, I don't know if y'all saw but the way that we're ensuring that is at the top of the stairs there is a structure that has already been planned to be but it was on the plans last time too but there is a door and you know we'll, you know it'll be locked or people won't be allowed upstairs it's not um it's just not open um but we also have you know all the windows i think um one of the concerns we heard from a neighbor was he asked if he will still be looking at boarded up windows and the best answer is, you know, if we're approved, definitely not. But I, I can't say otherwise. Uh, we have been in the process of replacing those windows in the last few weeks. Um, as the guys are there working, they'll pull down one of the damaged ones and bring it off to the, the window repair guy we like to use. So he's not overwhelmed at once. And they're not necessarily all going up yet. But as the heavier work is done, then we can when, put those things back into place. But the goal is to main, to retain every single window and every single door in the building. Um, it's funny, when this project started, it wasn't inherently a restoration, but it is becoming more of a restoration as we go. Uh, partially because I think the building deserves it. Um, you know, a lot of important conversations happened in the Masonic uh, Lodge meeting hall upstairs, and a lot of local kids learn to dance on the ground floor and so you know kind of keeping that stuff's important you know the walls do talk in, in a way uh see i think we got uh the there was some question about the handicap lift i think it maybe it wasn't included last time but we do have the cut sheet was added for that um i think that's about what that is I have, um, I sent all the sign regulations off to my, uh, my guy who's going to be doing the design work. He's the guy that did my logo and he's, he's currently working with the dames right now. So, um, I know he's very familiar with old Weathersfield. So he's, he's currently, his firm is involved in the rebranding of 
the Webb Dean Stevens Museum as they, you know, enter their new era with the new building. So um, when he has time away from that, he will be designing my building signage so that it's time appropriate, but also reflective of the brand, which he also designed four years ago. So he, he did all my logo work or his firm did, I should say. Um, there's no changes to the inside plans. There's no changes to the front portico, patio, any of it. Um, there's no changes to any of the bathrooms. Uh, there's there's no changes to the side any you know even this side stairwell um it's just that you know it just now shows that um the guardrails will be uh modern two code as in you know it, it will be updated um no occupancy changes there was uh, some question about adding, I, I think we talked about it last time, but we probably didn't get too into it on the plan. So in the basement, we've added some notes regarding the grain management. Uh, in the brewing process, obviously we have spent grain and um, the, the specific plan for handling spent grain is that we will be keeping it in the basement right where it says, well, it says HVAC brewing, grain management. Um, the HVAC brewing is is just that we use natural gas to create steam to boil the, the beer. And, and I think I might have mentioned this last time, these three circles represent the brew house, which is where that happens. So the, the furnace will be a quite a small furnace and it'll actually be just right, you know, right next to these tanks. Uh, there's plenty of room there to put... Uh, either those uh, totes or the, you know, like the blue plastic barrels, 55 bar gallon barrel drums. Uh, those are typically enough. I would probably use about two or three of the, those on a given day and they won't be outside just sitting around. They'll be brought directly to the farmer, which I said was Hayes Farm has agreed to take my grain. I've also gotten subsequently some emails from some folks who live in the village and around town who keep chickens. And so I will make my grain available to anybody who wants to feed their chickens uh, the grain. It is good for them, so, and free. Um, but in general, the plan is to send it to a farmer because a cow can eat a lot more than a chicken. <laughs> um, so all this structural work, I think you guys already all saw that. And it is, oh yeah, one more thing about the grain. That's what it was. Um, you guys may not know this, but uh, to operate a brewery, in America, you have to submit your waste management plan to the federal government. So if if there are concerns, it's a, it's something I have to do as a matter of a, attaining my brewer certificate from the government. So the TTB will require me to file that with the town. So that's, um, you know, a higher power, so to speak. I'll, I'm going to do, if you guys want something beyond that, you'll let me know if it's not what you know, enough information or what have you, uh, I will, I'm, I'll add to it, but it's a pretty thorough um, process with with our government. So, um, so I think, I hope that's everything that was, that I can think that were actually changes other than obviously the simple things, which was, you know, yes, that was on the plan or a note was added, like, um, you know, we, we did add some, some little notes, um, but they weren't, actual changes in the plan. I think that leads us to more of the bigger picture, which is, I think there was a lot of discussions about, I'm just gonna bring it back up to the site plan because I think it's the most relevant, right? Um, there was a lot of discussions about uh, parking, obviously, and we had- well, um, Sorry, can I, can I, can I interrupt? I, I think it probably makes sense to, to do this like by, by subject matter. And, you know, at this point, I, I think it's probably worth asking whether any, anybody on the commission has any questions about the site plan or the building or the architecture before we move over to parking, because I think that's a, it's an entirely sure. different subject. So um, I've got a quick one, Rich. Um, sure. Just trying to make sure that I have the total proposed occupancy numbers. There was a sheet that we were just looking at a few minutes ago during the course of this presentation that I thought listed the count, but I'm interested in. It, there, yeah, we have one. 
Yeah. So the proposed number of indoor seats, the potential indoor. Is this, this one, sir? I basically like to know the total number of seats inside, the potential number of standees inside, and the, and the proposed number of seats outside. Um, so however you can get to that, I mean, this says oh, 179 okay. occupants. Yeah. So it's, it's, so there's two, um, so the way we're, we're, we're required to calculate all of this in two different ways, right? So one is through occupancy, the other is through seats. Seats are generally how they determine parking requirements. Occupancy is more for the fire marshal, right? So in the world of occupancy, if you, um, they, they don't, you know, count bathrooms, they're not counted towards occupancy. Um, for this particular one, the occupancy for the area behind the bar is calculated at one, which is kind of funny. You can have more than one person back there, obviously, but you do have to increase your total occupancy and therefore it affects other aspects of the plan. So, I mean, it's not really, you know, it's they're yin and yang, they're two different things, but sure. Um, so there are including the bar top, meaning sitting at the bar, um, all the straight line tables and the, the, we'll call them love seats. There are 104 seats um, on in the building, inside, period, that were, that were seeking for approval. Okay, so the total occupancy, which now remember occupancy includes staff. That's that's kind of a part of the difference. It's just human beings inside the building, right? Um, I want to say it's 179. Oh yeah, there it is, 179. So that means there's approximately room for 75 standing people according to the way these things are calculated. And how and and you're. I assume you want the ability to have 75 people standing or, or are you willing to just, you know, have no, people I mean, this seated? is, this is international building code. I'm not speaking uh, to anything I, other I, than. I, I, I mean, that's not my, that's not my question. My question is simply, are you asking to have an approval that allows you to max out under the code and have 75 people standing and drinking in addition to the people who are seated? Or are you telling us, I, I would say that's a mischaracterization. So based on the rules, the laws, the, the square footage in the building, there is room for people to walk, stand, consume food, what have you, whatever they want, right? So under that, yeah, absolutely. I want that capacity because that capacity is truly what allows you to operate the business. Are you making money on anybody standing around and walking through there or on the staff that I need to count towards that capacity? Absolutely not. You know, they're they're there, right? But you would would you be letting customers get a drink at the bar and stand and drink it and stand I can't, and socially? I cannot stop somebody from doing that in a world without COVID. Can How I, many, um, can I I'm add just, to this? <laughs> um, yes. I'm Mark Colbath from Kemper Associate Architects. We're working with Micah on the plan here. The, the occupancy you see here for the bar area divided by seven, that's what the code uses for standing room. So even though we're showing tables there, um, we base the occupancy on standing room really just to be in a sense, um, you know, because you're, you're figuring out egress and safe egress. So you don't want to, you know, make a small number for that. You want to, you know, be on the side of good judgment that there. So that's divided by seven. The only area that's like a normal restaurant, you would divide by 15. And we're just doing that one sitting area where you see the square of seats there. We're dividing that by 15. So really that this occupancy is based on the code and how you figure out egress. I understand so that. I'm really trying, I'm just trying. Maxed trying. out so that you know you have the right number to get out the doors. I'm simply trying to get a realistic understanding of what's the maximum number of people who could be in that room. Well, the 179 one time. based on code is, yeah. is the max. And and how many outside seats was it? 108 outside or 78? I, I, 78. Again, I, yeah. yeah. Okay. That, that's all yeah. I, so, I mean, I guess, you know, that's an interesting question, but like literally, you know, obviously every commercial building gets rated for its occupancy. It's just, you know, the way that they, the fire marshal, the whole, that world works. So, you know, a, a, an office has an actual, a very high occupancy number, but how many seats you're going to use, 
I, I don't know, you know, this when this was an assembly use building, right? Uh, excuse me, when this was a Masonic temple, the whole area that is within that rectangle that is the bar area, that was an open space, right? So that, you know, approximately 1500 square feet was just a clear span open space. As according to the laws when they built this, that would have put the occupancy of that space well over 300. Realistically, it would put it at 400. And so what I'm actually proposing is lowering the occupancy of this floor from 400 down to 179, of which I will have seats for 104 of those persons. And I will likely have an additional six people at maximum working within that space at any given time. Yeah, I, no, thank you for that. I, from my perspective, all I'm, you know, from a zoning perspective, we need to consider all the impacts, including based on the number of occupants. So that's right. where I'm coming from on this. And, you know, theoretically, we could say to you, I'm not, I'm not sure that this would happen, but theoretically, we could say to you, you know, we don't want to have standees. We only want people seated because we think 104 is a good number of customers, you know, not 170 or 160 or whatever it is after you minus out the employee. So that's yeah. the relevance to the zoning impact. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, and, and for sure. And the reality is, is with any place that you're entering customers into, there's a few things. Just because you build it, they will not come. There's countless restaurants that have closed because people didn't come. And the reality is also with a space like this, um, we will reach our occupancy threshold I can only imagine on the tree lighting day. I mean, like really the only day that, that I recall that the center of the village is truly like busy, busy is, is will be this year. It'll be December 2nd. Again, everyone put that on your calendars. December 2nd, tree lighting, Old Weathersfield. Um, Got to do my chamber of commerce part. Um, but so with that, with that being said, you know, yeah, on, on that day, I will have to have somebody at the doors, counting heads, making sure we stay within a safe number. But do I think that I will do any additional business on a day like that? I don't know. A lot of those folks that are in there standing will just be warming up. You know, it's a tough call on that. So yeah, it is, it is what it is. But if, um, those numbers are, are pretty low considering that it used to be over 300. So um, as far as the outside occupancy, yeah, that's another one. They have you calculate it based on your square footage. And first off, you need to have a reason for that many people to stand on a lawn. Uh, I don't know if I have that many reasons, but I do have, you know, enough seating for a decent number of people if they were so to choose to sit down. So, yeah, just because the seats are there doesn't mean they're going to be full. I hope they are, but, um, you know, we'll see when we open. There's a lot of there's a lot of unknowns with this building. I think everyone's aware. It's been vacant for a long time. So um, other questions? Yeah, I had one quick question. I'm looking at the site plan and I see a fence all around the tables. Where are the entry points and the egress points <coughs> in that fence? Have they been oh. determined? Um, I'm, trying that's I'm trying to figure out the flow. I'm trying to figure out the flow to the, the people in and out to the sidewalk. That might have been lost in when they, so we just had to move that to some degree for the engineer and there's a chance it got lost, but uh, let me zoom in. I don't know if I can. So right here is one entrance and I'm surprised it's not shown because it was shown. And so that's strange that it's not anymore. Yeah, that's why I'm um, asking the question. Yeah, yeah, there it's there. <laughs> because so this is where my, my customers will go up these stairs and into the bathrooms. So obviously, yep. you know, and the other entry is um, right here. The main, we're not gonna put fence posts in the middle of our sidewalk. This this is our entry. This will be wide open. There won't be, there actually won't be a gate. It'll begin just on this side of the uh, sidewalk. So when Joe gets on, he might be able to answer to that better, but it looks like when he moved the fence, it may have reset the gates. So I apologize. Okay, no, I, I was on. And the other question, just a quick question. Um, you mentioned earlier that the second floor will have no occupancy. Will it have no use in the building? No use. Reason? No, it's we're we're not using it. No. Nope. Okay. Yeah, and and I'll um, actually I'm gonna have when I switch I'm gonna switch to a different thing. Can you see this now? A different, a totally different image or no? 
No, same one. All right, I have to stop and then reshare. Hold on here. Um, so you got it now? Yep. Yes. Okay. So yeah. I what I, this was part of what I was showing last time, and I will hop into this one. Have a few comments, but just this is a picture I put in there. This is the current state of the second floor. Um, and, well, I've done a little work up there since then, but um, I mean you can see just by this image that um, you know we got to do some work up there, and the the biggest stuff that you really need to do, you you can't even see. It's there's a, a fire escape that is no longer um, valid to modern code. I could probably get it recertified, but I, I talked, I don't want to because it's just, it seems like a liability. What we're going to do is when we do endeavor to open this upstairs, um, the goal will to be kind of make it our, our winter patio, right? So the patio will be closed outside and, and then we'll invite those people upstairs here to continue, you know, playing cornhole or whatever it is they want to do. But we'll um, have to put in a new door and a new uh, fire escape in order to to activate this space, just because uh, it's just it's it's very far from code. But that's that's the old Mason's Lodge room um, in the image. So oh, believe me, it's not like it was. <laughs> oh, you you were in it back in the day. Uh, I was there as a teenager. Oh, great. Oh. Yeah, it's a shame, right? No. Oh. <laughs> There's a lot of walnut wood missing. <laughs> I, well, I there and and uh, from pictures I've seen, as I, the oldest I found was 2013, in the planning. I don't know if you guys are aware, but the town through the planning organization, your predecessors, some of y'all, but um, did a study about what to do with this building, with the Belden House, and with the Comstock and Fair building, which at the time was vacant, and. Um, it's a big study. I, I really recommend you all like look through it as it directly affects what I'm doing. It was in fact what I use as my template to give the town what they specifically asked for. Um, and so that's what I've been endeavoring to do. And um, in that, the images that they had of the current conditions show that there was no wood even at that time. So a real shame, right? It's been, it's been completely good. Mr. Chairman? Um, with 16 items listed in detail from Peter with the answers on them, as well as 13 items from uh, Derek Greger, would anybody object to go into each one of those items, even though, because I'm bouncing around here a little bit, uh, repeating ourselves, the conversation is, is definitely repeating it over the late night we had at the last meeting. I'd like to suggest we just quickly go through the 16 items that they were answered yep. to us today, yep. uh, even in the 11th hour. I know uh, Michael Kerr, Michael had just uh, itemized some of those. And then when the engineer comes on, we can go through those 13 from Derek. And cut to the chase. Yeah. We're already clear about the yeah, right question, the outside dining. I'd have to be smaller if we consider approving tonight. And then we can go into parking. Is that okay, Rich? Yep. Yeah, I mean that's fine. Actually, I was good. I had in my mind to do it the other way around to to talk about parking and then to go through the memos. But either way, it's fine with me. Okay, that's fine. If you want to jump onto that, I just think yeah. all these other things that are, are are relevant and they're very clear. I think we have what twenty six to twenty eight people, twenty six people on tonight. So you might have a variety of questions, and this might continue into a late evening. So uh, just my thoughts. Yeah. You want to get into the parking now, or do you want to go right through? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think we probably should talk about the parking just because I think that might supersede what was in some of the writing and and it's also something big. So I think probably talking about uh, what the status and content of your agreement with Heartseed is and the parking management plan that I guess was submitted toward the end of the day just so that everybody gets a handle on on how you intend to deal with the requirements there and, and what you propose. Excellent. I agree. Uh, so I guess the best you uh, just heart seed. First and foremost, we have a five year agreement, you know, extendable as it goes. Um, they agree to the terms. My both of our lawyers agreed. Our insurance companies are covering it. Um, I have access to those spaces for um, vehicle use that they don't want, you know, trucks or they don't want overnight parking. 
Uh, I think it's it's pretty standard. It's very boilerplate stuff. Um, I think it might behoove us for me to send the full completed agreement out. Uh, I, I don't, I, I will want it at some point attached to my file because it does represent that that parking is associated with my building, but uh, they're just, they're trying to help another business in town by making parking that sits empty after 4.30 uh, active because it, that's what it is. Um, all right, so that, that actually covered or prompted one of the questions that I think people might have had before is, you know, you you propose 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week, but you only have the parking after 4.30? Yeah, um, I mean, the, for that additional parking, yes. Well, yeah, I mean, additional parking, I think we would call it required parking, so... Well, I mean, so I guess this is where I, I brought this up the last meeting, and I think it is a really important thing for us to consider as people of the town. This building was built as a commercial building in 1922. Its neighboring building was not built as a commercial building. Neither was like any of most of the neighboring buildings were not built as commercial buildings. When they decided to build this building and they approved it, they chose to make this a quarter of an acre lot. It immediately was a community effort. It required the whole village to be supportive of building a building that had assembly numbers as high as 800 capable in there. 800 people could go in this building and they chose to not have a parking lot, not build a parking lot. And I know a lot's changed, but when it closed in 1997, everyone was driving and, and nobody questioned where people parked back then. So I want to know in the 25 years since then, where did my parking go and why do I have to now identify every single space I'm going to use, including public parking, which is in fact by right owned by the public, which are my guests. You know, I am, I'm probably the first person ever to bring a proposal in front of the town that brings 33 spaces online from a third party. And, and I, 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 if that's not the case, I'd love to hear about it but I'm doing that. So I am all I'm using in this thing, this, this proposal is I'm adding 33 spaces to the town inventory by way of heart seed. I'm adding six spaces by building them. And I'm using an approval that the town already granted in 2003 for this property. All of those are mine by right by agreements that I've applied for. So I have 48 parking spaces. And there's no way to deny that I have 48 parking spaces. So then the question comes down to is, where are the rest of my spaces? Because I've acquired these 48. And if I'm not allocated any public parking, what was the town's plan for this building? I really, I mean, I, I asked that not in a, in, a, in a like, oh my gosh way, but like, you know, I live here, like all you guys and gals, and, you know, should we have torn the building down 25 years ago if it was never going to be able to be used without adding a huge parking lot? You know, it's, it's a real question about how we fundamentally see the village moving forward. And, and I'm, I'm just, I'm not asking in, that it's a pointed question. I think I know what I believe. Uh, it's a village. It's a, we park in front of the, the creamery and we go get breakfast at Comstock and Fair. And then we walk down to the Charles and we have food. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, let's, let's look at this as a village because when they built this building, they built it to hold large volumes of people. It was called Hospitality Hall. It held up to 800 people. I can't say that enough times. So I'm not looking to do that. I'm, I'm looking to reactivate it in the same way that the town said it should be reactivated circa um, 2013 when they did an economic development study on my building. I say my building because I'm emotionally attached. But, um, and hold on, my site plan engineer is asking for access because he can't get in. Um, Mark, can you please get Joe in? Thanks, Mark. Sorry, guys.
Um, so, I mean, I mean, I'm, really, your best answer there is I've got I've got the parking. I've got 33 spaces. I'm building six. I'm adding 39 total spaces to the village, and I have nine spaces deeded to my property due to a variance from 2003. So that's 48 spaces. I I don't know how to provide better information than that. You know, I really don't. Um, it's a quarter acre lot with okay. a with a, you know. Um, you alluded to the parking management plan yep. that I, I guess was submitted late. Can you can you discuss or summarize that for us, please? Sure. And again, this comes back into the category of I wasn't expecting to go first tonight. So um, let me just pull that up here. Right. And all right, you see a Word document? Um, somewhat. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay. Zoom, zoom in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So that's all that's right. Perfect. So this is me basically laying it out. Um, if a lot of this, I can skip through some of it just for the emphasis of time, because I don't think you're terribly concerned about how we got to the calculations of 47 uh, required. I think we went through that last time. Um, most of the brewing activity is morning activity. Um, and I wanted to be sure that folks knew that in general, we're not brewing, you know, brewers tend to leave by 4 p.m. If they're there after four, they're a customer at that point. Um, also, I heard people talking about us having 18 um, staff. I just want to remind everyone that I don't ever expect to have 18 staff. We um, have a capacity for 18 staff. Again, that's that fire marshal number. Um, we, I expect if you go to your average uh, brewery in Greater Hartford, you're going to see two to three people behind the bar, one to two people supporting them and you'll have probably another two to three people in a food truck serving food. I don't expect to be any different than those places. I expect seven, eight people on a busy Friday night. Um, if we're up to 12 people, that's great. That means maybe I have a full patio, but to get to 18 means I'm, I'm spending way too much on my staffing. And if I, I don't even have the room for the customers um, we're talking about, remember I have 104 seats inside to have 18 staff, it's almost two people. <laughs> You know, like it's just too many people staff to to worker ratio, uh, staff to customer ratio. Um, I did want to bring up some other fun stuff about how um, parking is going to work for us. You know, when I started this, I, I made one post on social media talking about um, an investors club and a, a mug club thing that I, I did. I got well over 100 emails within the first week. I really ended up communicating with 60 or so of them, and I ended up uh, having 47 folks sign an agreement. And this is without me following up with a lot of those folks. They're probably right now like, hey, you never called me back. I didn't. It's true. I was overwhelmed by the response. It was amazing and humbling. However, the real key thing here is of the 47 people who paid money, to join my loyalty club, which is most breweries have one. It's just a, you get your own mug and stuff, right? 27 of them have addresses within a few hundred feet of the building. They're within the historic district. Their intent is to walk to me. So while that is anecdotal, and I accept that it's anecdotal, out of 47 who handed me money, 27 literally live walking distance and expect to walk. Um, further, um there is a bus that stops directly in front of the building if you ever have ridden uh, route 53 bus you'll know it starts near the travelers tower in downtown harford and the 777 main apartment building which is a really nice high-end uh, apartment building in downtown and it runs down right past the building and then goes down and turns around by stop and shop and and then you know even kind of cruises up by the board in on its way back up um 
if I have a bus stopping in front of me and I have my bicycle parking and I have a lot of my folks walking, there is a pretty good chance that I have an opportunity to steer my customers away from driving, right? So, um, and again, this is kind of where I, I'm jumping ahead a little bit because a lot of this is old news. Um, if, I, if I incentivize my employees by covering for their bus fare if they choose to take the bus to work, that's a win-win for me. A, I have more parking available, which, but more importantly, it's it's good for the environment. I, I I intend to be able to subsidize as much as fifty dollars a month, which is more than the cost of a monthly bus ticket, um, to any of my employees who who have who have the bus ticket. You know, I'll verify it, obviously. Um, and furthermore, I'll do the same for anyone who bikes to work on a regular basis for bicycle maintenance. And that'll encourage my customer, my, my staff at least, to, to come by way of multimodal means. Uh, I can extend that. And, and, I, and I think I probably will is, is at least have a certain, you know, days, maybe a happy hour type situation on a Friday where anyone who comes by bus and has a valid bus ticket for that day gets a dollar off their beer. You know, these are things that I can do. And I think it doesn't just help um, the parking situation in town, but it, it, you know, it's, we're, we're a coastal community, whether we like it or not, Weathersfield is tidal on the river. So as water levels rise, we will be directly affected by worse flooding. And, you know, I, I take that pretty seriously. So I will be encouraging all sorts of multimodal activity. Um, so as a, this is kind of me skipping through that. I, jump through a lot of the words there. Um, the handicapped spaces. Now, this is the one thing that I'm, I'm going to have to say I we we need direction, I guess, or some assistance or whatever from the town. Um, after looking at all the options for handicapped spaces, there are no handicapped spaces in the village for a good long ways. In fact, there's a huge shortage uh, of, of handicapped uh, accessible spaces, certainly along Main Street. And while I could build a handicapped accessible space or two in my back parking lot, that doesn't actually help anybody who needs it, right? Um, you know, if you if you have mobility uh, challenges and you have to park behind my brewery to then go out and around and up to the front to get in the lift to get in the building, uh, it's it's like a fool's errand. So when we were discussing with the engineer, the solution we kind of came to is that we can repaint some of the town spaces in front. And what that ends up also requiring is that we put a curb cut and run a sidewalk connecting the existing sidewalk to the town um, parking spaces that are now been repainted as, um, as handicap. Uh, the, the only reason that we're not saying, yeah, we'll happily do that is because it's come to our attention that the town has some funds put aside to do some redesign work on that intersection. So right now, as we're talking about this, there is a very real possibility that I could be forced to spend a significant amount of money to create handicapped spaces that will only get dug up and redesigned when the road redesign is done. And so a better solution, in my opinion, would be and I think this was this was recommended, I should add, is that we ask you to, to grant us a temporary CO that allows us to operate without the um, without those designated um, handicap spaces. Uh, we are obviously we're installing a wheelchair lift in the front. We're redesigning and rebuilding our entire portico and adding sidewalks for increased uh, wheelchair accessibility. Um, most of the buildings up and down the street uh, don't allow uh, folks in wheelchairs to come in the front door due to their accessibility issues. We're really, I'm really going above and beyond there, I would say. So I just ask that you grant me a temporary CO till such time as that work is complete. Uh, it's my understanding that there might be construction as soon as next summer. And so we would love to participate in the design phase and you know uh, you know within the context of i mean it's probably about a thousand dollars work for us to to do that handicap space i mean it, you know we'll 
we'll, we'll buy another bike rack with it or whatever you want. But like, um, just uh, we'd like for you to take that under consideration is that if we were to put a, an expensive band aid there, it'll only get torn off in a few months and be redone. So, um, and, and, you know, it's up to you guys, obviously, but that's something that we did want to ask your consideration of. Um, okay. Good. Yeah. Um, the other, the other thing is, you know, just, I wanted to jump into, this is really the short, the short and sweet of it. Right. So for staff parking, they, they will be mandated to park in the rear lot of heart seed or in our staff parking lot. Um, the only reason I don't have in our staff parking lot listed is because um, last meeting, some of, some of the folks on here were trying to have me use that for customers. And I, I'm resistant to that due to the traffic it would cause on Church Street and the disruption to my neighbors of having customers come and go through the back lot and the doors opening and closing. It's much more agreeable to have folks show up at work once and leave once throughout the night and not disrupt anyone. That's my our recommendation there. But the folks who are parking will not be allowed on to park on the street. That won't help anyone. Um, we also will be subsidizing bus tickets and bicycle maintenance or cost, whatever, giving them a stipend for using um, other means. Signage is another key aspect of what we're going to do. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this. Shoot, uh, my apologies again. When we go back through the bullet points, this will come up. Um, I'm just trying to react to how you guys want me to give you the data, so I apologize. But um, for signage, we want to put a sign. Um, we have that sign that's in front of the building now, says no parking from here to the curb. I want to put a secondary sign potentially underneath it or near it that um, indicates that um, for my patrons, please, you know, Please do not park on Church Street. Their um, boondoggle parking is located at 304 Main Street, Heartseed, yada, yada. Um, I also expect, and it's not in this application because it'll have to be a separate application, but I suspect we will be applying to be able to put a similar sign out by Heartseed identifying that that's where the boondoggle parking is in the back, just so folks know which driveway it is and i'm told a lot of folks from trinity church accidentally park in um, heart seed and vice versa because the the nature of the way those driveways are set up so it'll make it a little easier so i can just put a heart seed and boondoggle beers parking only sign and and that'll help uh be a wayfinder um so that that's the signage and then the third bit is the handicap accessibility so, you know, I would love to participate in the redesign of the intersection uh, in lieu of that, you know, we are definitely open to re repainting um, the spot in front of the building or potentially repaint three spots into two handicap. Uh, I don't I don't get to make those choices. That's town land on a town road. I might, you know, I, I that's something you guys would have to tell me, I guess. Um, and we are, uh, yeah, we're going to, we just want to avoid using a pricey band aid when there's infrastructure funding available and, and more infrastructure coming, to be frank. Um, I don't get infrastructure funding, but the town does. And I'd love to help in any way I can to help make that happen. Okay. Um, just to be clear or restate it, the heart seed parking is 430 on weekdays. And is it available both days on the weekends? Yes. Okay, without restrictions on time on the weekends. Correct. Okay. Anybody except for, except on... no overnight, you know. Right, right, right. Yep. Um, anybody else on the commission have questions yeah, about Mr. Parking? Chairman? Mr. Chairman, this, yep. this sure, is Pete. Pete. Uh, could could, uh, could we have the applicant just go back up to the numbers of how he calculated the parking? I just want to refresh. Yeah. That, if you can, okay. please. I, I know you went through it before. But if you no could problem. just 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 quickly, please. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so uh, there are several rules. Um, for one is your staff members. For every two staff members, you need one space. Um, in the basement, we have the capacity. Again, that's the fire marshal term 
for as many as 12 occupants. Since we can fit 12 occupants down there and none of them are customers, <laughs> those are all workers, therefore that's six spaces. Um, in the tasting room area, we have um, 157, uh, excuse me, we have 84 seats that are at the long straight tables. And then we have 20 seats that are um, at the bar, right? Mm -hmm. And so what ends up happening there is the 20 seats that are at a bar are also one parking space for every two people, but the 84 seats are considered restaurant seating, which is one every three, right? If you have an office, it's like one every four. Um, there's a few different ratios, but so that's why they're kind of calculated with different ratios. Um, but then when the final thing is tasting room employees and that's the uh, we'll have a maximum of six workers on the ground floor so that's another three spaces so when you see that six in the basement or six spaces in the basement from the 12 potential occupants 28 spaces in uh based on the seats in the tasting room there of that there are 84. the 24 bar stools per mean we need another 10 parking spots and the six staff members who unfortunately don't necessarily get seats requires another three spaces. So 47 total. All right, thank you. So maybe this question is for you, Peter, since this addresses all the inside activity and parking required for that, what about the outside? Are, is there any parking requirements in a town from the outside activity? So the short answer is no, uh, we have not, um, I, I guess the, maybe the way to put it is sort of double dipped. If people have outside seasonal parking, we don't um, factor that into the overall uh, interior uh, parking uh, calculation. So we have not done that. And that's why this um, formula does not have another line item for the um, outside patio. And I'm, in my experience, I mean, if it's a if it's a nice day, uh, and there's an outside patio at a uh, brewery, um, the people tend to gravitate to the outside. With some people inside, it doesn't tend to be, you know, maximized with everybody inside and everybody outside at the same time. Um, just sort of my observation. It's uh, pretty accurate. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I guess I didn't know this. So. so across the street there in the restaurant when everybody is on the patio outside and inside the restaurant the parking is not counted on that outside patio no for you talking about lucky lose yeah yeah no no we um went through that whole process when they expanded uh the recent example would also be uh chips restaurant where we approved their outside patio uh, right. that's the most recent example obviously it's in a shopping center where there's you know ample ample parking but we do not uh factor in you know that additional seating into their you know permanent parking calculation all right good i'm glad you cleared that up because there was some some people concerned about that and i just wanted to be on record that that is not required in the town okay thank you yeah peter actually i i think probably the time you were on before it was a requirement that if you were going to add outside seating, you had to basically put the chairs up on the tables for an equal number to offset it unless you provided the additional parking, but the current regulations don't appear to require that. No, they All right, don't. Good. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, anybody else on the commission have questions about parking? All right, then I guess we can go on. Uh, we'll start with Peter's memo since those questions have been uh responded to um peter have you had a chance to look at the responses and see whether they address your concerns uh, i i have not gone uh, through them i did have a uh, phone um a zoom conversation with uh micah um trying to remember how long ago that was but i think it was last late last week we went over um you know the resolution of some of the items uh and then certain things that would not so so probably the best thing for me to do is I've been taking notes as 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 we sit here and listen. Um, so a couple of things that I think you guys maybe need to think about, uh, and that's not that's not my dog barking. So um, uh, no, that's definitely mine. Um, so 
uh, as to whether you want to attach any conditions on the uh, use of the patio. Um, so that's something that somebody should be making a note of is if they're going to make a, uh, a motion. Secondly, I believe, and I, I have not seen the parking, uh, the landscape calculations, but I have to believe that uh, a landscaping waiver uh, is going to be required regardless of those calculations. Third is that we will need a final executed copy of the uh, Heartseed parking agreement uh, with a caveat that if that agreement goes away uh, after five years, I think it was stated, then um, the applicant will have to come back uh, to the commission uh, to uh, reassess the uh, parking uh, situation with this particular use. Number four, um, uh, he did provide a parking management plan. I, I, I have not had a chance to really spend much time on that. One of the things that immediately jumped out at me that I did not see was any uh, social media website promotion of um, you know the Heartseed uh, parking availability. It, it's one thing to put up a sign somewhere, but you know by the time somebody sees the sign, they're already trying to park either on Church Street or on Main Street. But if there is a, a, a program social media wise in place uh, with either the website and or any social media that they use that um, similar to the Charles uh, mm -hmm. that advocates uh, that uh, interested customers have a parking spot uh, elsewhere, uh, that would be uh, helpful uh, as well. Um, we haven't talked about this. I think I, I think I actually previously addressed that one on, on the last one, but yeah, there, there will be a map and, and social media and what have you. I, I guess um, I kind of consider that a given. I was um, so, but yes. Okay, uh, uh, you'll you'll find out in a little bit if you looked at your 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 emails from the neighbors. There's some concern about the hours of operation, so I think somebody yep. needs to discuss uh, that. Uh, the issue of of music. Uh, I I've taken the position that there's not enough information at this time. Uh, to grant permission to have any music. Uh, if they want to come back with a plan with, you know, sound readings and all of that, that's fine. But for the purposes of this application, I think we should stay away from, from the music. Number seven, uh, there's a potential issue that I just became aware of today with the uh, work that needs to be done to the side stairs in terms of potentially um, jumping into a minimum a, a front yard setback. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. Number eight, uh, there are a series of exterior repairs to the building, painting and window repairs and things like that, that I think have to be incorporated uh, into the approval. Number nine, uh, we do not have a lighting plan uh, for uh, exterior lighting. Uh, we require, you know, photometric analysis uh, and details regarding that when we have not, we have not seen that at this point. Um, number 10, uh, there should be a condition uh, that uh, Dave Edwards asked about the second floor use. Uh, the theory being that if any any use of the second floor uh, is proposed, it will require further approvals from the Planning and Zoning Commission. Number 11, uh, they're asking for a parking reduction in the village uh, business district zone as part of the application. So that needs to be factored in. Number 12, we talked about the, heart, the handicapped parking uh, and uh, handicapped ramp on Main Street that has to be attached as a condition. And then something I just um, I just heard in the uh, parking management plan, although there's a kitchen proposed, there may be food trucks parked in your parking lot. Um, oh, no, no. That was stated in the parking management plan. So I'm not sure what that was. Where was that? I just I just saw it in the parking management, something about a uh, food trucks. Maybe you meant delivery trucks. I was reading that as food service trucks that would be in the parking lot, uh, which I'm sure the neighbor would have a concern about. Oh, sorry. Yes, let me allow me to be more clear. Then, um, first off, was I? I'm not muted. Okay. So when I mentioned at a typical brewery in Connecticut, a typical brewery, not me. Okay. They would often have two or three more people working in a food truck. We are not having a food truck. We have a kitchen. We would have those people operating in our kitchen. Okay. It was just drawing a corollary as to how many people would typically work on site in a brewery. Um, so my apologies for not being clear there. Okay, so let me clarify my number 13 then, no food truck. So oh yeah, oh hell no. Okay. Oh sorry, okay. pardon my language. 
Yep. No, that doesn't make sense to me because it just it all it does is manage to hurt my neighbor's business. If I need food and I'm not willing to make it myself, I just have village pizza bring over 20 cheese pies. I mean, that's that's what I would prefer, you know. Uh, so, so uh, Micah, this side stair thing that came up today, can you explain that to the commission members? I'm, I'm not sure. I can't, um, but Joe, maybe um, my or or um, Mark. So my my engineer is on now, and Mark is still on. So this is where I can start to defer to people who are a little more technically savvy than me. Um, so I'm sorry you had to deal with my ing ignorant ramblings. Um, Joe, you there? Yeah, uh, this is Joe Wren, uh, professional engineer. Micah, since that has to do more with the building, I think Mark could speak better to that. Okay. I could, I could certainly go through the, uh, the updated site plan that was emailed earlier today and then um, some of those landscaping calculations after that, if you'd like. Okay. Let me say that the existing Basically, the new exit from the basement is connected to the kitchen so people can get to the patio. Um, where that you know, works well in the plan uh, at the base of the stairs and adjacent to the patio um, is basically, yeah, right there. You can see the dash line right above that, the setback from the street that's considered a front um, setback. Um, it's 25 feet. The building's already non-conforming, so it's, it's in a non-conforming uh, layout as it is. Um, for the use of the building, that's like the best location for it. You can see that the stairs and the building already protrude into that setback. That's, I mean, you know, that's, the explanation <laughs> really so it is it's just where we would like to have it and um it's just already the building is not conforming as is and and something i'll i can add this other bit of information is that when the tab Shays brought forth their plan this set of stairs here which protrudes further they added some additional structure up at the top, a new roof and, a, and just a, a larger footprint in general for this set of stairs. In doing so, they did seek a variance. Um, the issue that we have today is we, you know, can't get a ruling from, I guess, uh, uh, enforcement, zoning enforcement to identify whether that would also count for this, right? Because they they achieved the ability to extend into outside of the building envelope, as you said, because it's a non-conforming, which we're doing here, whereas they got approval to do it here. So it's it's similar, but slightly different. So that was, um, you know, I guess, unfortunate timing, but um, yeah. some additional and flavors. This, and this, just to clarify, this is stairs to the basement that's not going up to the yeah. second floor or anything like that. So it's at grade and then going down. That's the, it's the stairs for the, the wait staff so yeah. they can serve the folks on the patio. So above, above grade, you're just seeing the handrails and guardrail. You need handicap down there? It would not be, it's already not um, accessible space. So it's not required to become handicapped. Not even for just, the employees? Just because of the grade. And, and there's no existing elevator or, or, or in the building. But not for the employees that have to be down there? Correct. Just because it's um, it's already, if it, if it was a new building, you know, it would have different requirements. So being an existing historic building, uh, it's not required to be accessible oh, okay. down there. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, what, while the architect is is addressing this this plan, could I ask you to show where you would put a handicap space in the back and how that could be worked into this plan? Because it was mentioned that it would not be a good solution, but 
I'm curious to see where where would it go? Is it is it possible um, in the back? We, and how would people get from the back to where they have to go? We discussed that. I don't know if Joe, you'd want to answer that. Really, we did discuss that too. Uh, I can. Um, am I able to share my screen so I can move around on it? I have uh, host disabled participant screen sharing. <clears throat> Alternately, we could just have Micah bring that back up and and we can move around that way. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Peter. <clears throat> um, all for the record, uh, my name is Joe Wren, professional engineer. Uh, we developed this uh, site plan and it's been updated to accommodate um, <clears throat> Peter's comments along the way and also uh, comments from, from your town engineer. Uh, so the question on the table is if there was a handicapped space um, to the west of the building in this new parking area, uh, where would it be and, and what would be the route for uh, the accessibility? Uh, so we did talk about having a handicapped space uh, over here. You can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So the closest space to the sidewalk would be this one. Uh, both of these spaces would be lost, of course, because one would be handicap and then the other one would be a striped aisle. Uh, so we would have, we would be reduced to a total of five spaces uh, on this side rather than six. Um, so the uh, handicapped person would leave this space, obviously, in the aisle and get down to the sidewalk. And they would have to go along parallel to Church Street, stay on the sidewalk, and then up parallel to Main Street uh, to get to this new sidewalk here that would bring them right to the lift. So it's a, it's a fairly, fairly long uh, travel path. Uh, the grades are gentle, uh, as you know, so it's pretty flat. Uh, so that is a good thing. So it is possible, it's just a fairly long route. Uh, you can see the proximity of some of the existing uh, on-street parking up here is much closer uh, to that lift to get into the building. Uh, so that's what Micah was mentioning before. If this on-street parking is extended and modified to become accessible uh, in the near future up to the sidewalk, that's just a, a much better uh, vantage point at that location rather than behind the building. I understand, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. If there uh, are no other questions related to that, um, Peter, I know this was, uh, the site plan was emailed earlier today, um, and I know you probably didn't have a lot of time to, to look at it, but we did make the adjustments for the engineer's letter along with some written responses. And um, we did add a, a landscape table down on the lower right, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and scroll over for that just to talk about that briefly. <clears throat> so the, the requirements we found that were applicable to this site um, in the VB district are listed here. Um, one thing I found interesting is you the zone allows 100% coverage, but then also requires 25% minimum uh, landscape area. So it's difficult, obviously, to have both. Um, but regardless of that, for our project, we have a uh, minimum of 25% and we're proposing 37.5%, even with the additional parking. Uh, the parking, as you know, are pervious pavers. Uh, that grass can grow in, I think it's 40% of the paver. Uh, so those are more or less arguably part of the landscape as well. <clears throat> um, but even without that, we have 37% of the site as uh, open. 
Um, perimeter landscaping, number of trees, one for every 50 feet of perimeter of the property. Um, since we have about 450 feet of perimeter, we have about nine trees that would be required. We're proposing three. So as you mentioned, that would require a waiver of those, uh, those trees. Uh, as you know, there were three trees along Church Street that were cut down by the town on town property, uh, not on this property. And then the two large trees that everyone knows, the beach and the, the sycamore along Main Street here, also on town property, um, but surround the property uh, with very large canopies, as you know. <clears throat> um, next one was parking landscaping, and that's only required if you have 10 or more spaces. We have six. Um, last one, landscape buffer minimum width of 15 feet. Um, on the west side, as you know, we're proposing six feet, which was similar to the previous approved application. Uh, but we do have that shadow box fence. And on this, on this go around, we show the, um, the honeysuckle plants planted every two feet along that six foot high fence uh, for further screening. And that detail is on the second sheet. Uh, so we have the shadow box horizontal board fencing here uh, with the major wheeler honeysuckle here uh, that grows fairly quickly and fairly densely and planted every two feet will create a, you know, complete honeysuckle wall over there for complete screening of the neighbor to the west. Um, the use to the west, as you know, is residential. The residential line is a little bit off the property line. Uh, so a little bit of that property um, based on available information is in the, uh, the VB zone, um, but the, the use of the property is a residential zone. Uh, so there's that screening there. And then on the north side, similar to the Tepshi application, it's uh, 6.7 to the pavers. Um, it's not paving anymore, or those permeable pavers. Uh, and then all along the back of the building, it remains the same. Um, the same as it is today. <clears throat> so with that, hopefully that covers most of the uh, questions and the regulations regarding landscaping on the site. All right, thank you. Um, in, in addition to one, one other thing, in addition to uh, the, <clears throat> the shadow box fencing and so forth, uh, Micah has added uh, some hops uh, that grow up uh, vertically in a vine type manner for additional green screening. Um, one of those is in this location. Uh, they grow very tall rapidly, vine up strings, and um, that would be a screen in this area. And then another one just to the right side of the, the existing stair to provide another uh, screen to that area. Any details of that? Um, I'm sure that Micah can provide, um, but they are called cascade hops and they grow vertically um, very quickly and the hops could be harvested um, and used in the operation, correct Micah? Yes, that is correct. There's a lot of different varieties of hops I'll be planting Cascade because it's the it's one I'm more likely to use than some of the others. It's a the second most commonly used hop in American brewing, and it grows very well at my house here in Weathersfield. So I'll just be replanting them. Great. We'd be we'd be more than happy to answer any other questions related to the site plan. It's more or less very similar to. Uh, what you saw last time, uh, barring some minor uh, revisions based on Peter and the town engineer's comments, but everything in a nutshell is more or less uh, very similar to the, the previous application. Okay, so you, you, this site plan is responsive to the comments from the town engineer in October 27th? Yes, and we have uh, written responses to those. Um, if you would like, we can go through them. Uh, you should be able to see them on my screen in a moment. Um, would you like to go, there are 13 comments. Uh, most of them are very, very straightforward and simple. Would you like me to go through these quickly? 
No, I think I think it's probably sufficient just to go through whichever ones you may not have said, you know, that you fully responded to. If there are any that require, you know, an essay question rather than yes, no. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, I'll just paraphrase very very quickly. Number one just deals with all the parking that um, Micah went through very thoroughly already with handicap parking and number of parking spaces. So no need to duplicate that. Uh, same with number two. Um, <clears throat> number three, uh, he asked for an updated survey map. Since the survey was done in 2013, uh, there have been some changes to the curb lines of Main and Church Streets there. And what Mike is proposing is he, he is required to do an as-built map at the end of the project before he gets a CO as a condition of that. And with that as-built survey at the time, he will update the curb line since they don't really uh, have any major effect on what's being proposed at this time. Um, number four gets into sight line. Uh, we included a, a fourth sheet uh, with an aerial image underlay to, to very clearly show the sight lines from the proposed driveway area with and without parked cars along the north edge of Church Street. Uh, so that's the fourth sheet of the site plan. I can show you that if you wish uh, after we're done here. Um, I always saw that. Okay, great. Um, number five was about the employee parking at Heart Seed, and he wanted a note added to the plan, so we did that. Um, update of a construction note, number six. Number seven, um, the town engineer recommended that the split rail fence on the east side be moved out of the right-of-way. Uh, onto the property and that was done, that was pulled over. So it's a foot inside the property. So it doesn't further um, restrict as the town engineer mentioned uh, pedestrian traffic on that side, of, on the east side of the site. Um, <clears throat> number eight, um, the town engineer recommended that we provide grates on the four dry wells that we have for the roof runoff, uh, just in case they fill up uh, and need to overflow, they could overflow through the, uh, through the grates. So we've done that. Um, all the roof drainage will be connected to those. Uh, nine, <clears throat> that was that has to do with the grates, just elevations added. Ten, we added the sizes of the sanitary sewer and water. Um, Eleven, updated the thickness. Twelve, we added the PZC approval block to all sheets, uh, all four sheets. And thirteen, um, there was a, there was a cover sheet including in, in the architectural set. And when he reviewed that, the cover sheet wasn't included and we got that back on there. Um, so most of these you can see are very, very minor and uh, they, they have all been incorporated uh, into this plan uh, with the exception of adding on-street parking along Main Street, which um, Micah spoke about earlier. Okay, thank you. Does anybody on the commission have any questions for the uh, architect or the engineer on, or anything that uh, deals with responses to either Peter or, or Derek's questions? All right. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Not, I think, sure, Pete. I, I'm, I'm not yep. sure if I'm addressing your question, but I'm a little confused about uh, this, I guess it's south side property line and it shows that there's tables uh, on the town right of way there. Now, Peter said early on in the meeting that um, it's his understanding that, you know, there's a request to, I guess, the town council. I don't know if it's gonna go all the way up to the town council to, yes. to look at this lease option that they're they're asking so that they can have that space and use it uh but i want to understand is that something that that the town council wants us to recommend or is it their decision what what happens to that space right there i'm just trying to understand that so so well, it's the, you want to you want to handle it rich or you want me to handle it? no i just i just wanted to start by saying that um, you read my mind. That was the last thing I wanted to cover before we opened it up to the public, because I just wanted to be clear whether, you know, at present, since the town council hasn't seen this, 
you know, hasn't sent it to us for an 824 review of the potential lease, license, sale, whatever of that space, whether for purposes of tonight, what we're approving is within the property line, or is it proving what's within the property line with the understanding that subject to the condition that, you know, we give them a, an 824 referral and the town council gives them either an appropriate lease or license that they can, you know, install the fence and expand into that additional area. And I just wanted to be clear what what specifically we were, we were going to be asked to act on tonight. And I guess I interrupted Peter, who was just about to answer that question. Yeah. Or I or I can defer it to 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 Micah in terms of his preferences. But you know, as Rich indicated, there are two scenarios. You could approve it so that the patio stays within the confines of of the property lines, or two, you could approve it with some caveat that uh, uh, still requires council action. Uh, they probably will have to refer it back to you again anyway uh, to to sign off on that. Uh, right. And then the council will will vote on it. So, uh, Micah, what is your um, preference here? Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think I, yeah, I don't know. I think I said it earlier, but I don't know. I kind of got jumped around earlier, right? Oh, my video is not on. My apology. But um, uh, of the options, the lease option seems to be like the one that makes the most sense, based on what I understand. The town can pretty much at any time cancel that lease um, at which time you know my property line would then revert you know to being the line so i think the way i i worded it was what what um they said in the meeting which was i am i'm seeking a proposal to be able to use my property as a patio as well as the town's property subject to the town's approval. So it's it is definitely one of those caveat situations. I, I would I would be happy to have it subjective and wait until or however, you know, put that bit of it on hold until I believe it's the ninth when they said they would be able to vote on that. And it is town council, I believe, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it does go to town. Well, would that be the new council or this current sitting council? Uh, I don't know when they get sworn in, but yeah, I don't know how that works. Right. I don't even know what happened with the elections yet. <laughs> uh, all the, this is Joe Wren too. The town engineer picked up on that as well, although he didn't mention the movable tables and chairs. Uh, he did mention the split rail fence and the driveway pavers um, and the fencing that's within the town rights of way. Uh, so he had us he had us add these notes thirteen and fourteen. Um, regarding a whole harmless agreement to be executed and filed in the land records prior to the issuance of a building permit. Uh, and then number 14, <clears throat> the proposed fencing within Main and Church Street rights of way will require a license agreement as you're discussing with the town council prior to its installation. So those are on the site plan already as well. <clears throat> well so Mr. Kerr, I, I'm just gonna be very open here. I would prefer if, if we settle that question first and so that tonight what we are looking at is within your property and what you're in control of. I, I would prefer if that's what you wanted us to, to look at tonight. Okay, uh, I, I mean, I, I get that. You know, I, I said that's, that's certainly an understandable thing. I, I would, I guess my only thing is I don't, I don't see a problem with with having a decision on that, but also a decision on if the town grants me the requested lease, then there is either also an approval for that extension or there is not an approval for that extension. Because then I, I we will we will have to come back and 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 show you the same drawings with the only difference being that the town either voted yay or nay, right? So, um, I mean, I think you have all the information you would need to make the decision either way. The only difference being whether or not the town is collecting rent from me or not, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, yep. I mean, I defer to you guys, obviously, but I mean, from from my thought, it doesn't seem like it's it's uh, a leap of faith to say that you know, obviously, well, we can obviously vote on 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 the property at hand, but have a have a have a condition because. You know, if approved, we also agree to this space or we do not. I mean, that's your call. I, it's just, you know, what I did mark them out. I have a picture. It's not worth sharing, but um, I, I staked out the whole yard with the property lines and, uh, you know, it just runs right across the yard and it, it just makes no sense to have a fence in the middle of a yard like that when, you know, it's, it's it's a it's 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 an arbitrary line that was drawn by the highway department in 19, 1836 when they built the road or whatever you know like I, the fence should be parallel to the sidewalk like it is everywhere else in the entire town right also i think i'll have to go back to historic district commission if i need to relocate the fence so that's the, that's not a big deal i'm going to have to go back to them anyway so but yeah, I just I would prefer that you vote on as a two-step process personally. If that's I don't think that's any hardship to ask of you guys, but if you if you disagree, it's fine. It's your call. You guys decide. I am at your mercy. Okay. Okay. All right. Um before I open it up to the public, does anybody on the commission have any any last pressing questions? Yeah. I would ask the Joy chair. Uh, you hear me? Yeah, and, Am yeah, I voting I tonight or what? I came in late. What was the question? Am I voting? Am I a, from the beginning of the meeting? Well, you're participating in the hearing now, so we can figure out on the voting when we when we get to that. But okay, uh, that's my only question. Yeah. Yeah, you can leave if you, <laughs> you can no, leave. No, need an alternate is in my spot, right? From the beginning. Yeah, we, we had we had nine people when you came, but you know, we can oh, okay. we can deal with that as time goes by. Um, yeah, thank you. Paul wasn't, because Paul was just appointed. He was obviously wasn't here last time. Um, I would ask that you, Stop screen sharing so that now that we're going to the public, I can actually see who's here and doing things. Um, is there anyone in the public who would like to comment or ask questions about this application? Uh, please raise your hand. Uh, Do you want to speak? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, there you go. All right, first Paul Brady, then George Lombardo. Thank you. Ahead, uh, members of the commission, good night. Um, Mike, good night. Uh, so my, uh, my first question is, uh, again, regarding the parking. So if I understood what uh, the applicant was asking based on his hours last time was to be operating from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. However, based on what we're hearing, and, and, and no one, from my understanding, has seen the agreement. Um, the agreement states from 4.30 to whatever time that is, so 4.30 p.m. And with no, um, no uh, conditions on the weekends, um, I, I don't understand how that really plays into because you only have the parking spaces um in the later part of the day i don't i, I really don't know if that if that makes sense there is a paul may i in interrupt briefly i should be more clear there's no uh, times or dates stated on the agreement the contract is blanket i can use the parking spot whenever i want it's more of a respectful choice on my part with with them okay so in a legal sense it is it is my parking whenever i want it so just a point of information, that's my, I have it, I'm just reading it to make sure. So I, I'll share it with everyone. Uh, it was signed this evening at 4.45 and that's why nobody has it. Uh, thank you for that, Micah, but. Yep. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, but yeah, um, yeah let's... if you don't mind, um, there's a procedure with the commission that I really wanna just ask my questions and then get that answer. I don't plan on being here late again. Thank you. Um, now, 
with that being said about the parking spaces, um, we didn't, uh, from my understanding, the applicant is basically refraining from uh, addressing the handicapped parking issue, which is one thing. Um, the other thing is uh, for those parking spaces, those hours don't make sense. Um, back to the parking management uh, schedule, I want to understand how do you plan on policing this? Um, you know, how will you know which patrons are parked over at Heart Seeds and whether or not they're at your establishment? Because you mentioned something earlier that everyone parks in front of the creamery and walk to Village Pizza or walk to wherever. People can simply park, park by Heart Seeds if it's a nice day to walk and just, I mean, they could stop by you, but they could also leave and go somewhere else. Um, I don't know if you've, I don't know if you've been in town or here the last couple of Saturdays, it's been very busy here. Okay. And busy to the point where people don't respect signs. Doesn't matter if there's a no parking sign, people do park. So, uh, I, I don't understand that part. The other thing that worries me with this application is that to really leave it up to another property to hold more than 80% of the parking spaces for this project is, it, it's a bit scary. Um, you know, during this period, we've seen a lot of properties change hands for whatever reason they may be. I mean, what happens if that property goes up for sale and some, and there's a new owner, what happens to your agreement? Is that null and void? What happens? So there are those things that are all that are that are troublesome. The other thing that I still can't wrap my head around, and I'm gonna just point to one of our neighbors, Glastonbury has a brewery, right? Hops on the hill. They are they are open from uh, literally it's from four to eight on Thursday through Friday, and on Saturday from eleven to six and Sunday one to six. I don't understand your the hours that you're proposing in a historic district. Again, I don't think that you are taking into consideration where you are as far as the historic district goes. And it's kind of like, there's an approach here, like just do whatever whatever pleases you at the end of the day. Um, the, you mentioned something earlier too, which I don't understand. You mentioned that if it's cold that you will invite your patrons up to the second floor for you know, to uh, something of shoot corn or whatever they, whatever they do. Um, I don't understand that because if you're not using the second floor, no one should be up there at any point. Um, yeah. If you don't recall what you said, you could probably go back and watch this video. I, I can but, tell you what I said, Paul. I said no, when the upstairs no, no, is open. No, no. Take, take notes and we'll respond at the end. We're not, we're not going to have prolonged dialogue. Well, I, I, re I request the lack of antagonism. The words were stated. Okay. No. We, Mr. Chairman, can all, I proceed? Yeah. Yep. Keep going. Now, there, there, there is another issue that um, I do understand. And, and again, I'm not an engineer. And if you ask me the way the parking is calculated, Again, not an engineer was done by Seaton, and it's clear by what I'm listening to tonight that the applicant is uh, or doesn't mind to have people stand in there up to, as he said, there's 179 capacity inside plus another 78 outside. I mean, that that's a lot of people. Village Pizza can only hold 70 capacity, right? 70 people capacity. This is twice the amount of that. To and and for and for and for most for most of the parking that's required for this to be on somebody else's property, it it doesn't that that to me does not make sense, right? So either way you take it, I think that we're we're gonna have an issue, and um, like like previous uh, residents have, exp have, have 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 voiced their opinion that there is a safety concern here, and so that those are my those are my things um the other thing i want to ask you while the other thing i want to ask 
there is a there's an easement between my property and yours where it specifically says on my property where your deed where the property boundary line is by deed it is that maple that that mulberry tree that's right there where that post is if i'm if i'm not i mean correct me if i'm wrong but that sign based on um based on what the engineer's plan look like it looks like your fence is to the west of the tree instead of the east of the tree i i don't understand that either but um again i'm sure you'll get another opportunity to address that part but that those are what i have for now mr chairman thank you very much good thank you um next george lombardo and after that charles uh Okay, uh, this is, these are just questions mostly out of ignorance. I just want to know how things work. Could, could you just uh, please give us your name and address for the oh, record? George, George Lombardo, 251 Pine Lane in Wethersfield. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, there's, no, as a, there's no plumbing or electric in the building. That has to all be created from scratch. Is, 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 that, is that correct? Uh, and then... I have no idea. Oh, I think someone needs to mute. Uh, and Norm, can you mute, please? Uh, Thank you. Yeah, or does that not enter into the zoning and planning? And uh, and that was my question as far as that goes. How the, and, and this may not be uh, germane, but curiosity, how long is this going to take? What's the completion date of this? Uh, that's that's basically just question, just those two questions, simple questions. Okay, thank you. Um, Charles had indicated in the chat that he wanted to ask a question. Yes, I do. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, could you just uh, give us your name and address for the record, please? Yeah, hi, my name is Charles Sylvester. I live at 44 Church Street. I'm concerned about the parking as well. Uh, I understand he wants to have picnic tables outside. I think it's a perfect spot for handicap parking. I think he should put in handicap parking up against the building, much like the village across the street. There's parking between Main Street and the building. I don't see any reason the town should, the town should pick up the bill for his parking. I mean, we're already covering most of it. Uh, other than that, I agree with my neighbor, Paul. I, I would ask the committee to look at neighboring towns like Bloomfield, where Back East Brewing and Hooker Brewery are both in industrial areas, not in residential areas. Rocky Hill, you have Still Hill in an industrial area. Glastonbury's uh, Hops on the Hill is not. <laughs> In, an, in a residential area. I don't even think City Steam in Hartford is in a residential area, though I could be wrong. I, although it is a city, not a, not a village. Uh, I also am concerned about the live music and the hours of operation. Like Paul mentioned, uh, Glastonbury is pretty strict with their hours. I don't see any reason why we should allow him to be open so late when most of the neighboring businesses are already closed by that time. And uh, I also would like to see the town impose a no commercial sales, no mobile packaging. I, I don't wanna see a trailer truck coming in to do canning. Uh, I mean, he's talking 18 fermentation tanks in the basement. I think that's upwards of 3,000 gallons of beer. Uh, I don't think it's all going to be consumed on premise. So I, I think there are a lot of things the zoning needs to look at uh, before they grant a blanket approval here. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, oh, I, I would, I am curious. I. I thought there was a petition dropped off, but I, I, I missed if it was uh, noted. Uh, I, I would be curious about that too. It would have dropped off. No, I was gonna, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to let all of the live people testify before I started summarizing correspondence. Okay, I, I think, yeah, I think that's uh, all I have for now. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, John and then Jean. John? Nope. Now. John? Try star six. Not getting anything. Uh, Jean? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hi, I'm Jean Freeman. I'm at 59 Church Street. We're about a half a block up off of Main Street, right around the bend. Um, first, my, my husband Brian was hoping to attend, but he wasn't able to. We did submit some comments, so I would just like to confirm that they're in the record when you get to those. Okay, yes. so I don't need to read those. Um, I would just like to reiterate um, the, the issues with just maybe the volume of parking and the concerns for the neighbors, potential for the noise, um, certainly if there were to be music. I'm a musician, so I'm all for music, but nobody needs to be bombarded with it every weekend night or whatever. Um, in a, this is a residential neighborhood and I'm, I'm supportive of the project overall and I, I congratulate Micah for the efforts to do something with this building. And I think that's a great thing for the village, but it also is a residential village. So I'm really hopeful that we can come to some agreement with, you know, with the, the neighborhood and, and the, the marriage of that with the business district. I think it's something we'd all like to see if we can uh, resolve some of these things. I do have concerns about the late hours. 11 o'clock seems later than anything I'm aware of. It seems like everything else shuts down by about 10 o'clock here in town. Um, so that's a concern if, if the hours were extended. And then I do have a question. There's already quite a bit of parking on Church Street on a busy weekend evening. And I assume it's some of the staff maybe for Village Pizza or whatever, but I see people parking and in and out and coming and going. So I'm puzzled about what would happen there. Are those cars, would they no longer be allowed to park there if there are the no parking signs? Um, and then obviously the questions about how any no parking signs would be enforced on Church Street. That's not at all clear to me. So it's great to put up a sign and to try and limit it. But if there's no enforcement, I'm not sure it's a great solution. Um, that pretty much summarizes it. And, you know, I'm, I'm mindful of our neighbors down the street and the impacts on them. And so, again, we're hopeful that some of these issues can be managed a little bit. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I, I think one thing to, to mention is that during the testimony earlier, it was indicated that the, the live music portion is being uh, is not being pursued as part of the application before us right now. Yes, I, I did hear that. Thank you. Okay. Um, Rob O'Connor. Good evening. Uh, Rob O'Connor, 180 Main Street. I'm really on here for the other the other applicant, but uh, as as a, one of the residents in the village business district, I sort of feel like once in a while I have to just pipe in because the you know the historical district and and the village business district master plan is really oriented toward residents. And I think Mike, I think you know I, I I've seen some of the meetings. And I know you don't do a lot of stuff as a as a potential business owner. Um, and the one thing I want I would suggest is. Take the patio out of the plan for now. Put the brewer. The patio is not integral to a brewery. It's that's it's an add-on, and I think for me as a resident, all it does is add people out in that main thoroughfare. It becomes it's in the gateway to the village as you drive up there. I don't think this is just a personal opinion. I don't think people out drinking beer at picnic tables is what <laughs> one of the one of the most premier historic districts in the country wants to be seen first. 
but it would be neat to have a brewery in that historic building and try to go from there. You'd eliminate the parking um, worries about the additional people out there, the um, and like putting it, putting tables out where families and residents and vill and visitors are walking and drinking. I mean, it's just kind of like there's no way to. A, a brewery out in a rural area with out in a farm field with, with people drinking out there is fine, but this is going to be like a, a little zoo of drinkers with people walking by. I just don't think it's a value added part of that business. Good beer inside a historic building would be, a, I think would be a starter for you. And I think it would be a lot less um, drain on the town. I think it would be a positive. It wouldn't be something that's basically has a bunch of, of your headaches in one spot. You're going over the land and how where the fence is going to go. Take that away. Put a nice lawn there and let let the brewery be inside. So that's my two cents. Thank you. Good, thank you. Um, try again with John. You look like you're unmuted. Anyone else to suggest? All right. Is there anyone else in the public that wishes to comment or ask questions about this? Yeah, no, I'm Cavoli. Can you hear me? Can okay. I speak now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Norm Cavoli from 14 Center Street. Uh, right, I live right next to the Charles restaurant. What I've heard about parking so far is very similar to what the Charles restaurant requested two years ago. And living right next to it, I can tell you exactly what they proposed, what we approved, and what actually happened. When the Charles got approved, they had to specify 55 parking spots, not including Center Street. He did. Main Street, his lot behind the uh, firehouse and behind Keeney. And that was approved uh, to Charles management, put up signs in front of his building, a nice big sign telling them to park in those public lots with maps, with pictures. And, uh, and these lots, by the way, are in sight of the Charles. You can certainly see behind the firehouse and you can see the Keeney entrance. He had his employees park in the public lots mostly behind Keeney, okay? Uh, but people still parked on Center Street. Uh, the uh, people were concerned on Center Street. They approached the management. So what Charles management did, he put up yard signs on Center Street, one or two signs in front of each house, probably 15, 20 signs saying, please respect our neighbor's property, park in the public lots and you know, again, with maps, how to get there. Uh, what happened, the people still parked on Center Street. So for three weeks, I looked at well, who parked where on Center Street and the public lots at lunch and dinner. What I found was that behind a firehouse, more than half the time there was space available and people still parked on Center Street, six, eight, 10 cars. There was always, always 98% of the time, spaces behind Keeney, 20, 30 spaces. For an example, on August 10th at noontime, 11 people, non-residents parked on Center Street. There was no spots behind the firehouse, over 20 on Keeney and a few spots on Main. Main Street was hard to judge because how far do you want to go? So in general, what, uh, we found all his efforts to get people to park in the public spots didn't really work. Keeney was open 20, 30 spots. There were spots behind a firehouse once in a while and 10, 12 cars on Center Street. Uh, what, and people on Center Street were not happy. So what he did that is actually working, he actually took those yard signs put up 15 to 20 signs that read, 
no parking, free parking in the public lots. That worked. In general, one or two or three cars will park on Center Street. The concern is when a resident parks on Center Street, customers will see that and park behind it. So I'm not against the brewery. Uh, if you do approve it, I just want you to know that people will probably park at illegal parking spots between the uh, building and hot seed. They will use hot seed, but you know it certainly is more difficult to see uh, than it is Keeney. I had one lady stop me in front of my house, ask me, where is the firehouse? Uh, there's no sign in the firehouse that says public parking, by the way, which is another concern. Uh, with that, uh, hope you make the right decision. That's why you guys get paid the big bucks. Good luck. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else who hasn't commented yet who would like to comment on this application? Yes, this is Heidi Heller. I own that okay. property uh, with my husband at 2628 Marsh Street in Old Weathersfield. Um, it is the property that is located behind Lucky Lou, so it's about a quarter mile, um, not even from where we're talking about. My concern is as follows. Um, number one, the outside seating. Um, as we've seen with our experience also owning 172, 174 Main Street being across from the other bar, uh, when there is outside seating with people drinking until 11 o'clock at night, people drinking unfortunately get a bit loud and they have a tendency to linger for a while and stay outside. My concern is the increase in noise until 11 o'clock at night with this outside seating um, that would potentially disturb our tenants. Secondly, my concern is the picnic tables. This is a historic district. I understand these are not permanent tables. These are temporary fixtures, but nonetheless, it represents Weathersfield. So when you come into Weathersfield and you stop at the stop sign at the four corners, my concern is that the picnic tables are degrading overall the look and feel of a historic district. Uh, third, the hours. Uh, why does it have to be until 11 o'clock at night? Again, I have tenants. The tenants rent the apartments. They're sleeping there. They're professional people. They need to get sleep and to have people until 11 o'clock at night drinking at the bars, and then they're walking the streets at night trying to get to their cars. Um, I just don't see any benefit in having it to be 11 o'clock at night every single night of the week. And then fourth, um, the parking issue. Um, I've spoken up on the parking issue before on other matters. My concern also on this one is that if they take the parking spots that are on Main Street where the folks from Lucky Lou's Park, we have an issue because Lucky Lou's parking lot currently in the back is not big enough and a lot of people park out front. If those people who park out front can't find parking and they can't find parking in Lucky Lou's lot, they often come over into our driveway and take the tenant spaces. So on busy Friday and Saturday nights, we find us, ourselves chasing people out of our driveway. And now with an additional, you know, I don't know how many spots we were talking about, if it was 50 or for 100 people, um, my concern is that that many more people are going to be parking in our driveway. So those are the points that I'd like to voice for um, consideration of this committee. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Um, Artie. Somebody shows up as Artie. Going once. You're muted now. You're unmuted now. Try star six if you haven't. Hello? All right. Um, anyone else that hasn't spoken yet who wishes to do so? 
Christina Surgeon from 16 Church Street. Yep. So one of the okay. questions I have, or how many handicapped spaces are required for this type of establishment? I mean, if the project or if the proposal is approved, I would say the applicant should be required to put in handicapped parking spots or adequate <laughs> parking spots. Um, and then one of the other things that I would recommend if the commission decides to approve would be the hours of operation. Like others have said, I mean, I have a school age child and God knows I would not want my child to be hearing rowdy people at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at, at night on a weekday. And so that is one of the major concerns I have, um, including the people who are just going to be out there sitting on the patio or sitting at picnic tables. So I would recommend that the commission put strict guidelines like other towns have if they that's if the the, the the zoning board decides to pass this other towns like I said have these um, breweries on farmland and still the hours of operation are <laughs> very strict so for Micah to come in and think he's entitled to open until 11 o'clock, and just shows this bold sort of entitlement. <laughs> I just find that bizarre, but I will stop there because I get emotional quickly. So thank you. <laughs> Good, thank you. Uh, try once more with Artie. Feel like I'm being pumped. Um, is there anyone else that uh, wants to speak on this application? Uh, just a suggestion. It, it already is likely having a microphone issue. You can type in the chat and at least that might allow us to include what you've, your interest in public record, right? I don't know if technical issue, just a thought. Yeah, I mean, that, that's possible, but uh... Or if that's the same person as John. <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering too. Yeah. All right. Now, last call. Anyone else uh, wish to uh, speak is, on this? Is this when I get to address the emails and the comments that were just given? I have some responses in a presentation. Well, I think I think what I was going to do is, you know, if this is the point at which there is no further public comment, I was just going to identify the additional correspondence that we received, and then you can respond to everything. Oh, okay. All right. Um, we received a petition signed by five individuals opposing it, um, and also opposing the, the brewing of beer on the street. They're from 31, 32, 24, and 44 Church Street. Uh, there's an email from Pamela Malachko, 37 Church Street, um, opposing it, asking for uh, changes with respect to the noise ordinance at, at 10 p.m. Um, email from Kevin Cavanaugh, 164 Clearfield Street, uh, in support of it. Uh, Allison Norton, 115 Ridge Road, uh, in support. Julie Fidrich, 255 Willow Street in support. Charles Norton, 115 Ridge Road in support. Uh, Emma Shea, 422 Griswold Road in support. Uh, James and Michelle Tremblay, 24 Woodside Drive in support. Um, now here's a copy of Micah's email to Bonnie Therrien requesting the, the right to use uh, the, the town property between the, the property line and the right of way. Correspondence from the lighting company and the electrical company indicating that it was going to be dark skies compliant. 
David Corcoran, 65 Oldham Road, strongly in support. Um, Brian and Connie Morin, 134 Volta Road, in support. Uh, Robert Alden, Unit 204, The Borden, um, in opposition, um, parking plan, and uh, other issues, including drunk bicyclists and signage and use of the second floor. Um, James and Michelle Tremblay again. And then the ones that came today, we got correspondence regarding the parking agreement. Uh, Algis Masiunas, 34 Axio Drive in support. Uh, Brian Freeman, 59 Church Street. Uh, Brian and Jean Freeman indicating that they had concerns about the hours of operation, scope and density of the outdoor seating, outdoor music, and parking. Um, and an email from Charles Morrison, including the same petition that we saw a minute ago. All right. So, um, yeah, you can you can answer questions, respond to comments. Um, and however you choose to proceed. Uh, oops. Come on now. There we go. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like a lot of those were direct questions, so I'm going to do my best to answer them all, and I hope that the notes I took were adequate. Um, uh, I'm doing the best I can. So uh, from what I gathered based on the names of the folks who just spoke, a lot of them were the same folks who sent letters um, and or signed that um, the petition. So uh, questions fell along a few things, um, hours. This is an important one. Um, I, as a business owner, am told that I need to choose the hours I'm going to operate my business on months and months and months before I ever get to open the door. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I don't, I don't know what the market will allow. I don't know what the customers will allow. I don't know. I don't know how much traffic there will be. Um, there has not been a brewery brewing beer in Weathersfield since approximately 1865. Um, and that happened to be on the same exact location as I'm proposing to do so now. So we don't know. Um, I asked for 11 o'clock because I'm applying for brew pub licensing. I'm doing so in a business district. I heard a lot of folks say that I'm doing it in a residential district. That is categorically incorrect. It is a fact that I am applying to turn a business property into a business use that is an allowed use for the property. So please recognize those, those are facts, right? So as a business property, I absolutely have to show respect for the neighboring residential properties. I've done everything within my power to reach out to all those folks involved. I've knocked on doors, I've mailed letters, I've sent them uh, a parking plan a map showing available parking. I've even arranged a parking um, agreement with a third, with another party, which is again, not, not been done before. So I'd like to show that I've done all I can. I've, I'm proposing a, a, a custom fence to do my best for the neighbor. Um, throughout all of this, not once at any time ever has any of these folks reached out to me. They all have my cell phone. They all have my email. And I would love to work with them to give them the best I can to make their lives easier. But they bought a house immediately adjacent to the village business district. It's always been a village business district. This is where people got off of ships in the 16, 1700s and came in and did their re, you know, their, their shopping, they refitted the ships and went back down to the Caribbean. To pretend that this is a sleepy town forever in history is a fall fallacy. 
I am taking a place that once manufactured beer and sold it to customers, and I'm going to do that again 145 years later. It's not a big deal. Uh, in fact, the building itself had a liquor license up until it closed. It was uh, a brewery before. Yep, we can uh, hear you. So, factually, when 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 the the EA Mills Eating House existed and opened in 1965, it had a liquor license. It served beer, and there were no breweries around. So they manufactured their own beer. That was common practice at the time. I am returning this corner back to a prior use. The building pictured the, that was there is now the same house two doors down. Um, I'm not I'm not trying to do something that's never been done before. When I talk about the hours for my brew pub, 11 p.m. isn't late when you look at all the other restaurants in town are open till 11. So if they're open till 11, why can't I be open till 11? I'm not trying to extend the hours of the business district. I am I am merely trying to do the same as the rest of them. Rob, I'm answering questions, my friend. All right, let's, let's just keep on point. I don't know. It's it's interesting. People can can make disparaging comments, but this building has been vacant for 25 years, and I'm trying to activate it. That's that's what's up. That's what's really happening. I, I hope people recognize on the commission that this is no laughing matter. It isn't about. Our, uh, arbitrary hours. I did the research. I looked at what my peers are doing and I matched them. If it is shown that I shouldn't be open as late as the Charles, then I would like to know why not. If I can't be as open late as Lucky Lou's or Old Town or um, Lenoche's, I think that's that's really a shame. Um, I'm, I'm willing to be flexible, but I also don't believe I'm going to be open until 11 o'clock at night on a Monday. I think that would be ridiculous to assume, but uh, when I first open, I'm going to be open until I determine when I should close because we don't actually know what kind of customer base we have for a brewery. It's been a damn long time. Okay. Um, I, I saw things about policing parking. Um, I don't know. I've added 39 parking spaces to the village inventory. Uh, whether I police it or not, those 39 spaces will absorb parking. I think that's how parking works. There are parking craters out there that absorb parking and allow other areas to be developed. So I am acquiring parking, which I've I've done. I've, I've and I hope that I hope that everyone parks in the right place. Uh, to the gentleman um, who I think it was Norm who lived uh, near the Charles. You know, I, I do feel for you guys. I've heard you've had a real tough time, but uh, at the same time, you uh, are getting it under control and every new business is going through going to go through growing pains. I understand that there will be problems when I first open and it will take a little time to get folks trained for a lack of a better reason. It won't be for a lack of my trying or a lack of my caring. It, I'll be out there making sure it happens. All right. Um, that's all I can do. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to stand by these words. I live in town. I've lived in town for 12 years, so I have, I'm nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. Um, you guys talked about the hours of Hops on the Hill in Glastonbury. That is a farm brewery. They have restricted hours by being a farm brewery. They cannot operate on the same hours as me. It's an entirely different license than a brewery, and it's an entirely different license than a brew pub. They're required to buy a certain amount of their products from Connecticut suppliers. So let's talk apples to apples. The other brew pubs in Greater Hartford are City Steam Brewery Cafe, which is open till one o'clock in the morning. Granted, it's the middle of downtown Hartford. I don't consider them a peer. Uh, another one would be um, um, in Southington, the Kinsman Brewing, which is pretty much a peer. It's in an old building. It's right near a commercial district. Uh, it does have its own space, so it is a little separated. But there again, they're open till midnight. Um, illicit Brewing is open till midnight as well. And that's in Manchester in the old Adams Mill building. Um, I'll just say I have food. It's a restaurant. That's, I, I don't know. I mean, if, if, if you guys want to talk about different hours, we can talk to some degree. But I really would love to have that conversation. Every one of my neighbors has my cell phone and my email. Please use it. Um, 
there was a comment about my upstairs area inviting people up there. Nope, that's once the upstairs is legal to be occupied, I look at that space, it will end up being my winter patio. As the patio gets empty, people will start to hang out upstairs. That's not now, that's whenever it becomes legal. We've been very clear that there's no activity planned for the upstairs other than a locked door. Um, the capacity of the building, um, I am not out here trying to create rules. I'm using the rules that exist just like every single other business person in the state of Connecticut. I can't, I'm not creative enough to come up with a way to work with capacity. Those numbers are designed by engineers that are on this call that went through many years of college and are required by this town to present the way it is. I, that's not me coming up with some secret formula. That's just the capacity and it's designed for the safety of the customers. So that number is a, an indication of the maximum number of human beings allowed in the building. And that's all it is. Doesn't mean I'm gonna have that many people. So I'm not trying to get a crazy capacity. And I'd like to remind you when, that, when this building was a Masonic temple, it had a capacity of over 400 people, right? It was at least 400 people on the second floor and likely 400 people on the ground floor. Um, I'm asking for a whole lot less than that. Um, I'm not trying to get away with anything here. There's, I'm not hiding and you got my cell, you know? Uh, the fence on the property line, um, it is on the property line. It was always on the property line. We saw no evidence of a variance, but we'll double check on that. We won't be allowed to build that without um, double checking that anyway for you. Um, I believe you're referencing there's an orange stake uh, that is sitting there. That orange stake doesn't mean anything. That's not the property line. Somebody put that stake there at some point. Um, it looks like it was moved, um, but it's not uh, related to anything specific. There's, um, you know, the actual survey map shows the precise location of the property. Um, the next person that went was George. Um, it is correct. There is no electricity or plumbing in the building at this time, although we do have electric service set up. Plumbing will go in um, once we have to get building permits for all that stuff. Um, so essentially, yes, it's a shell. I don't know if you saw, I did briefly before show the, the current state in the ground floor and on the second floor, and it's, it's just, a, there's nothing there. So in order to build that out, it's actually not a ton of time. It, it could be as little as six weeks, but I'm guessing based on the timeline we're at, I'm in no rush to get this thing opened until the end of March. Uh, once the weather starts to get nicer, it makes a lot more sense to have a brewery opening. Most people spend the winter months uh, dieting and or avoiding carbohydrates and craft beer is one of those carbohydrates they tend to like to avoid. So we call that the slow season. Um, then I think those were your questions. Uh, Charles, you mentioned, um, I think, right? Yeah, Charles, you mentioned a handicapped. Um, I'm not trying to make the town pay for it. Um, maybe I, I didn't vocalize that clearly, but in our communications with the town engineer and with Peter, we our suggestion is to repaint some of those town spaces as, as was an option um, brought by the engineer and to put in a, a proper wheelchair ramp to connect it. What I'm saying is that the town is in the process of prepping to do work there. So um, you ever see when the utility comes through and cuts up a road and buries a pipe right after they pave it? This is what I'm trying to avoid. Let's just work together so that what we do works out for the best of everyone. If the town is looking to redesign that and add some spaces there, which I believe was what that's what I was, what was alluded. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not privy to the plan, but um, you know, hey, I'm, I'm happy to work with it, but that's where I think the handicapped spaces should be. And if you really ask my personal opinion, there should be at least two of them there, not just for me, but for whatever happens at the Belden house in the future or anyone who comes to our town and is, and is, uh, needs a wheelchair to get around or even just a walker. Like if you have mobility challenges, you shouldn't have to go and find um, one of the very few spots which are behind the Keeney Center um, uh, that are in a public parking lot. So um, I think that Main Street should have a few and I want to be part of it. And I'm definitely not asking the town to pay for it. I just don't want to put a Band-Aid on something that's immediately going to get ripped off and paved over. Um, so yeah, also I believe, Charles, you said it's a residential area and, and that's not, again, not accurate. Um, <clears throat> in fact, part of 
um, Paul's property, 16 through 18 um, Church Street is technically within the village business or half of it. I don't exactly know, but like I'm definitely in the business district. I just am adjacent to the residential, which is why I propose a custom fence that'll um, that is taller than normal and designed to eliminate noises. And I'm also planting with vegetation. Um, it's also why I'm looking to plant hops uh, and have them run up strings to help with the aesthetic of blocking any additional noise from the patio and any views of the patio that might be considered unsightly by the folks down Church Street. You guys are my neighbors, like it or not, we're gonna be neighbors, we need to be friends. And this is again, that's why I gave you my personal phone number. I want to be able to talk to you guys. Um, so he mentioned 18 fermenters. Um, these are, 18 fermenters is a lot, it's true. Uh, what I drew on the plan is the maximum possible capacity of number of fermenters. Um, each of those fermenters holds 150 gallons. 150 gallons is not much beer. In the grand scheme of, of running my business as I currently do, um, I am going to be bringing beer to this location, not bringing beer away from this location. Uh, I assure you, I told Roger four years ago I would not buy this property because I could not make enough beer there if I tried. Um, it turns out I'm going to make my beer in Rocky Hill, so that makes this property viable. Um, by the way, my beer meaning most of my beer. I will be making beer on site. Um, and then I don't know. I, I feel like I missed another one of your comments because what I wrote makes no sense without the question. Sorry. Um, Jeannie, uh, your concerns were parking and music. Uh, yeah, music were dropping. I'll tell you guys this one thing. I would, I, I'm more likely to come back and ask for at least like maybe acoustic outside. The God's honest truth is um, my parents are going to want to just play music out there, acoustic. And I, I love that because it's how I was raised. And so at some point I'll come back. But I want to, as I noted earlier, um, it's in a written response to Peter's questions that um, I have to come back and, and do some research. I got to get a decibel meter and I really need to know how the noise might reflect off uh, Village Pizza because that brick wall is going to be a problem. There could be some issues and I want to make sure I'm not annoying the crap out of people because if you're annoyed, you call the cops. If you call the cops, I got to deal with it. So the point being is I want to have a good solution. My ideal situation is somewhere where I can control the volume. Um, the town requires me to keep it under 62 decibels, and that will be at Paul Brady's um, property line, 62 decibels. So, um, you know, those are the laws, and I'm, I'm going to get a decibel meter to help guarantee that I stay within them. Um, I don't, I like to stick to the rules. Um, so that was that, uh, that's, and parking, um, I mean, I think I've addressed parking, uh, continuing to address it seems like a, it's, it, I understand people can park on your street. It will take a little time to make sure we get it sorted. I will probably engage Lemoore's or one of the other towing companies to help sort it out. I mean, there are, according to the town, a limited number of 12 parking spaces on that street. Currently, all 12 are generally taken by Village Pizza staff and, and occasional guests. And a couple of my builders are there on a regular basis now, but they try to park on my property. Um, you know, the reality is, is I'm, I, I, when I looked into this, I did not consider those my parking spaces to be used in any way, shape or form, because I just don't want to get in, in, in anybody's way. I, I don't want anything to do with Church Street. No offense to the people of Church Street, but I don't want cars there. I don't want any noise there. I want all the, you know, I'm, I try to move everything forward and um, I'm doing the best I can to satisfy that. Um, there are concerns with the patio being unsightly and that people drinking isn't the look that the town wants. Um, that's confusing when there's a, a nice patio in front of Village Pizza and at um, Lucky Lou's and the Charles and a big outdoor area with picnic benches, I might add, at um, the seed company next door, gosh, heirloom market. Um, you know, the fact that folks can buy a beer and, and sit at any of these places, they all have liquor licenses and they all have outdoor seating that, so I, I respect the opinion, 
but um, there is plenty of precedent to show that the town is supportive of outdoor seating. In fact, I would say that outdoor seating has become much more popular in the era of COVID. And, um, and, and that's a large portion of why a patio is very essential in today's business climate. Um, I took note of when Heidi mentioned that she thinks picnic tables are ugly. Um, I'm very open to some changes there. So Heidi, um, you know, maybe there's a way for you to get my uh, contact information. Um, I'll, I'll type it over in the chat there. If you read it, please some point reach out to me and, and we'll talk about options because I'm open to whatever you think might work. Um, I was just using picnic benches because I've seen a few other ones around the village, much like the split rail fence. Um, I think that's generally it. Just hours, parking, and people drinking, and music kind of hits a lot of it. Um, if I missed anything, can someone please mention it? And I'd love to be able to help you right now with an answer. We tried to accommodate for all these things. All right, thank you. Um, I do have responses to the emails I received that were some of the comments. Um, I don't know if I need to get into them, so I'm gonna be super quick here with this because these were again in the correspondence I received. Um, so for this, uh, just I'll be very brief. Um, oh, to the gentleman who was asking about the upstairs, can you see that? Am I sharing again? Yep. All right, yep. yeah. So I don't know why it's doing that. All right. Um, so if you see this, the status of the upstairs is pretty rough. So you can be sure there will be no cornhole up there anytime soon. Um, Michael, I, think, I think we've already visited this about seven or eight times already. So no, that was just to the gentleman who just made a comment before he did not see it. And so I just, as I was opening this up, I wanted him to see it because it's on the way to okay. the emails that I received that I was told I should make comment on. Um, if that's not the case, that's fine. I have comments to the emails I received that they were, um, these were folks who were concerned about um, some aspects of, of the plan. Uh, I don't have to comment on them. Uh, these are pictures that show the hops in a way, kind of how they will go up the building and how they will block the views. Um, I, I took the liberty of drawing in, and this is to my property line. These stakes are actually all used as a geometric way. So that is actually where the first bit of hops will be climbing up. So if you're standing at the corner, you will not be able to see Mr. Brady's house. Uh, well, you would be a little bit, but not so much. And he certainly wouldn't be seeing folks in the patio very well. Um, and this one I didn't make as fluffy, but the point being the same, in this photo, I'm standing directly in line with the window at the front of the Brady house on the second floor, that window, but I'm still on my property. So this is the view approximately from where that area is. And you can see there would be no visible patio or just a tiny corner of it over here. OK, and I think it's important to note that when we fix these things up, I, I truly am looking to take this in mind as to make it what we can do. Uh, this was a solution that came up late, and I think it helps with the aesthetic. Um, I'm happy to just drop stop there unless you want me to, you know, respond to the folks, but I, I don't need to. It, it'll be a matter of the record when I send this to the town. Okay. For the sake of time, All right. um, I mean, I understand people are not comfortable with parking. People are not comfortable, you know, I mean, I, I've, I've survived, I've provided the parking. I, I don't know what I can do beyond that. So, um, the only thing, uh, are, are there other questions from the commission or is that? No, I think Tony had his hand up. Peter Gillespie, can you tell us what the status is with the old Weathersfield parking plan? Has there been any, uh, financial commitments or anything by the council on the table or how far along is it? Uh, so um, you're talking about the, the parking improvements behind the fire headquarters? Yes. Okay. So um, so there is a, a conceptual plan. 
uh, we we did present it uh, once to you guys, once to the Historic District Commission. The Historic District Commission uh, su su yeah. suggested um, several changes to it, uh, which we have not yet uh, uh, returned to them. Um, the State Bond Commission did provide the town with $500,000 towards the cost of it. I believe the town council at one of their most recent meetings authorized the town manager to go forward uh, with that agreement, uh, which would cover approximately half of the parking lot. So we're now contemplating uh, the best way to go forward and maybe phasing it or maybe looking uh, for other pots of money to make those improvements. Uh, but the first step would be to go back to the drawing board, make some revisions. Uh, additionally, uh, at this point, we, we do not have agreements with the property owners either. So there's quite a bit of work that would have to be done in order to move that plan. But we are uh, working uh, towards trying to do that um, as quickly as we can. Excellent, I think that's important to have for the record anyway. Michael, with the hours, um, some of the other restaurants are closed on Mondays. They open it at noon and they're closing at 10, except for Fridays and Saturdays, go from noon to 11. Is that something you might be doing or is your request tonight to have it, and you are muted, is your request tonight is just to have it uh, all till 11 o'clock at night? Yeah, my request is as it is for a reason. Uh, it's truly because those are the reasonable hours for the business to operate. The reality is I'm going to try to be open on Mondays. I very well may throw in the towel on that pretty quick. A lot of breweries don't do Mondays, but something I noticed in all the time I spend in the village, and it is a considerable amount, it's you know multiple times a day, multiple hours every week. Um, I am I see so many people that maybe it's a COVID thing, but they're walking around looking for something. And I've asked people and they've asked me what they can do and there's nothing. So I think I'm going to try to provide a place, uh, at least for those folks. And you know what, if it works for me, then, then maybe Comstock will offer up their breakfast. And then that way I can finally get my sausage chicken cheese breakfast from them on Monday when I really need it. So what would be your hours of operation as of for tonight's submission? Um, well, I'm asking for this, what I've put in the submission yeah. because those are the potential I'm, hours I'm I would like to say for the public. So I don't know if the public has read your submission. Is it noon to 11? No, it's, it's, um, I, I think it's 10 to 11, 10 a to 11 P right. I don't have it yeah. right in front of me right now. I'm sorry. Okay. That's Again, what it says, seven days a week. Yep. Yep. 10 AM to 11 PM. And again, that's that's because those are the reasonable hours for the business to operate. It doesn't mean I will be operating seven days a week during those hours. Those are the maximum hours. I will be narrowing it down to the hours that make sense for the business. I don't have any other questions. I have no other questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Anybody else on the commission have questions for the applicant? Is the go? Thank you. Um, did the applicant say that the parking agreement is signed yet or not? Um, I know we don't have a copy. So when do you expect you're going to have a, a signed version? It was signed at 4.45 p.m. today. Okay. I have a copy of it, but when I picked it up from Heartseed, it was the redlined version. So I did scan it. So I sent, I think, did I send it? I might've sent it to Peter, but the reality is I, we need to re-sign it on a cleaner copy. But I have, I have the Hart Brothers signatures. It, we are in agreement. It's, it's done deal. That and not in the political the sense, in the factual legal sense. Yeah, that could easily be part of the motion. And Peter, you had a comment a meeting ago in your prior memo. Um, I think that the parking utilization data that the applicant was using was from two, three years ago, certainly pre-COVID and pre some of the new businesses. Is that is that still the case or have, are they looking at new data? That wasn't clear to me. It, it isn't clear to me either. Uh, if, if it is new data, it's data that um, was uh, field gathered by uh, Micah or his associates. So I, I don't think there is uh, updated information since uh, we've experienced COVID. We do have 
a group of Yukon engineering students who are gathering information as we speak. However, uh, that final analysis won't be available probably till the springtime. Also, I, um, I initially provided that data, but then once we discovered that we had the pre-existing variants, I didn't have any requirement to show any availability on public parking. Uh, we have already been granted those nine spaces. I acquired 33 spaces and I'm building six spaces. So that's our 48 spaces. I'm actually technically not seeking a parking reduction because we already received it. We have it. So all I, I, I right if I if I'm correct, Peter, I mean we're just uh, allocating it to this change of use. I think. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Hello, can you hear us? Yes. This is Artin John from uh, Village Pizza at 233 Main Street, Weathersville, across the street of the proposed uh, brewery. Uh, we noticed the, uh, Mr. Uh, Mike, uh, the beer uh, proposal uh, gentleman, uh, avoid uh, in his conversation to uh, address the parking uh, that we have on the side of the building and is already been violated by some of his contractors and uh, although we have all the signs in there, uh, people, including his uh, contractors, are parking there. When I confront one of them, he told me he was going to buy a food afterwards, but now he's not going to because I wasn't kind enough to let him park in there. Of course, he was leaving before I even had the conversation with him. Uh, our concern is our parking we want to protect our 16 spaces we have on the side and in the back of our building. And no way or form we wanted to fight with anybody or have the expense of hiring uh, a parking uh, security. So the town and uh, the planning and zoning commission have to be very careful on what they going to approve as uh, uh, capacity. And uh, the gentleman come in and talk to us, although he avoids to talk about us because uh, he knows, so as anybody else, that uh, people are going to park in the first parking that is available. And that's the fact of life. Uh, we can police the parking, but we expect the town and their... Uh, agents to protect us by doing the right thing to begin with, which is uh, find the parking spaces first, and then we talk about it, about the other stuff. It uh, looks like uh, to us, it's uh, made a problems that I can, we can see it coming after 40 years. Exactly. When uh, Lucky Lewis has bands playing, the, our parking lot is constantly with people that they didn't know. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, well, I thought I can park in here. So we know that this is going to become a problem and a big problem. And we do not want to uh, spend any more time or money so we can protect what's ours because we're paying a high dollar for our property. It's a problem for the last at least 30 years or 40, if you can put it that way, when we started. And it's still a problem today. And it's going to get worse. Thank you very much. This is Art and John, 233 Main Street, for the record, Village Pizza. Uh, the gentleman who come in and talked to me, his name is Mike, I guess, told he was going to make me a ton of money by uh, buying a pizza from us and so on and so forth. We don't want to be any more wealthy than already are. <laughs> Working a hundred hours a week each, we wanted to yes, we wanted to protect our parking lot and our little business, family business, what we have for a hundred years. Thank you very much for the commission, and uh, thank you for uh, allowed us to speak. Okay, thank you.
Anybody else on the commission have any questions for the applicant? I think I did address those parking issues. However, I, I that might have been before he hopped on the call. I, I yeah. think he, he didn't hear. I, I have no intent of anyone parking anywhere near Church Street. That's Village Pizza Street. Which is why I also don't make pizza. All right. Um, anybody else on the commission have any questions for the applicant or, or his professionals? Uh, last call for anything new from any members of the public. All right. Uh, any final comments from the applicant? This is uh, Christina Surgeon from 16 Church Street again. I, I, I echo what the business owner across um, from, village, from, from us said, Village Pizza, about uh, people and parking or driving or contractors driving on our property. This past week, the sewage folks who have, I guess um, Micah has a... Uh, a sewage thing at the side of his property yeah. and, and it smells but it's not I mine saw, that's the I, town i saw the sewage people driving on my driveway and then zooming across over to the property and i'm thinking to myself okay i already had this conversation with micah about people mm -hmm. and driving on the property and he said he would make sure or you'd make arrangements for that not to happen or you'd let us know if somebody was driving on our property and <laughs> i mean he, he says that people have christine I, I have done that those folks were public works those are nothing to do with me <laughs> nobody related to sewer was on my property that had nothing to do with me so I apologize that that happened, but that would be like Northeast Utilities you're driving in your driveway. And that's rude. When I finish speaking, you can speak, but don't but interrupt me. You're accusing me. me of something that has don't nothing to do with me. Don't interrupt me. When yeah. I finish talking, you can talk, but don't interrupt me. That's rude. Hey, your call. <laughs> that is just so rude. All right, <laughs> you... enough. Yeah. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll stop because finish, I... Finish I've Thank had no septic work done. There's nothing to do with septic on my property. So I apologize for that, but that has nothing to do with me. So I'm sorry for the the the, the it's, happenstance. It's a porter potty. It's a porter potty that they came to, to take out the sewage out of. So oh, porter potty. Okay. Porter potty. Yep. Is is okay. the porter potty your porter yep. potty that, oh, that you guys use? Yep. Okay. I, so the I was porter unaware. potty folks. I'll call them. The porter potty folks were the ones who drove on my property and zoomed over to the the your property to get the the sewage out, and that thing it, it, it frightened me to begin with <laughs> because I ha had already had or my husband already had that conversation. So it behooves me that somebody keeps driving on our property in order to get to the property next door. And so that is a major concern for me and my family, and 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 that's all. Thank you so much. I have to answer that because again, you have my cell phone. I beg you, please, if anything like that ever happens, I will do everything I can to stop it. I, I am immediately right now texting my contractor. This is, I believe, the first time I've heard of anything from you folks regarding anything regarding that driveway the only time it's been used i've texted you i feel like i've done my best by that please call me so i can do something about it i don't know if it happens if 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 nobody tells me and this is definitely not the venue to talk about something like that there, it's Mike, a construction also, issue uh, with a subcontractor uh, uh, can, can we just get operation. back to the can we just get back to the commission meeting and for the record what you just said isn't true I personally have right. made it clear to you. So just, just you haven't reached to out to me, but no, let's get back to right. the meeting. I, I've given you the option to call me. Just, just get back to the meeting. Thank I you. Will. Okay. Thanks. All right. Anybody else on the commission have anything that they want to ask before uh, we discuss closing the public hearing? All right. Maybe we'll. Uh, get some guidance from 
computer did I, on this. Did I what? miss the opportunity to ask another question? If it's a new question that hasn't already been asked, asked and it's relevant to what we're talking about, go ahead. Yes, uh, I mentioned this. This is Charles from Church Street again, 44 Church Street. Uh, I, I questioned um, mobile packaging. I was curious if he's planning on bringing in uh, a trailer truck to do canning or bottling. Yeah, happy to answer that. Uh, all those, all those companies require a minimum volume, and I don't wouldn't have enough volume even if I used all those fermenters. Um, right. Forty-one thousand six hundred pints or something like that. That's a let, not let enough. Him, let him answer. Yeah, it's not enough. Um, I'm happy to, anytime you want to talk, give me a holler. I use Ironheart Canning. They're the premier mobile canning company in the Northeast. Uh, when I use them, I use them down at um, the brewery I do most of my contract brewing out of, which is in Stonington, Connecticut. And those are 40 barrel batches. So you can understand the magnitude is, is much different. Uh, in fact, there is a minimum uh, order of 18 barrels. So it's just, a, I will never do it because it's it's not uh, efficient to have it there. And B, uh, I'll I'll never do it because I I won't pay the premium to have them package us such a small amount of beer. Um, there is only a very small amount of beer that's going to be produced here. Truly. So. Um, okay. Happy to talk to you about Ironheart, their policies. I'll even have you join me on a canning day if you'd like. It's very, you know, I'm um, uh, sorry. I have to work for a living. I don't have free time like that. But thanks right. for the offer. Right. Uh, we, we do work on Saturdays. And... Yeah. Thank you, Michael. All right. I think you responded to the question. Yep. I, I'd uh, like to see that in writing, though, somewhere that you wouldn't do that. Oh, you can put it anywhere you want in writing. Happy to have it. Yep. Well, no, I will be filling kegs, though. I mean, I have to fill kegs because that's how we um, work the bar. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we fill kegs, then we pour beers off the kegs. Yeah. So. I mean, commercial sales. I'm not. I'm not worried about what you do there. I'm worried about traffic going out. But thank you. Uh, uh, <clears throat> a lot of folks are worried about traffic. I I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the biggest contributor to traffic in town is the DMV. They have more cars there in the, in, by 9 a.m. than I have in the whole day. <laughs> it's a 100-table restaurant, guys. But they, but they have parking. It's a 100-table restaurant. All right, all right, all right. But they have we, parking. We get that. We understand that. Um, <clears throat> does anybody on the commission believe that there is anything else that we need to know that we haven't been told tonight in order to be able to evaluate this application? Oh, yes. Peter, is there anything? That... One comment to the committee. There, there was a petition it... dropped off on Monday with 16 signatures. I'm not sure. Yeah, we're, we're going to, so we're going to, we're going to read that in, but we're actually just making sure that the, any commissioners need to voice anything. All right, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but I only got the one that had the five signatures twice. Um, but that it is what it is. Um, were were yeah. the 100 plus positive emails distributed? Yes. Okay, just verifying, because I, I don't, I only got about eight of them, so. Those well, ones that we read we off. We about eight of them this time. We got a bunch last time. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. We. I think they were all read off in the last ones. All right. Yeah, and it killed my phone, and we're. Having <laughs> <the same> <laughs> I was going to say we so, we uh, sat through that in a couple iterations. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. In a, in a good way. <laughs> all right. For the last time. Um, is there is there um, sentiment that we can close the hearing or? Do members of the commission or Peter believe we have anything else outstanding that is of such importance that we need to continue this? I don't feel like there's any information that we're going to get that's going to alter any sort of decision that we're going to make tonight. 
It's not only if anybody tonight. else dis if anybody else disagrees, let me know. No, I, I agree with you, Ryan. It's not only tonight, but it was the four and a half hour meeting we had last session. I That's I agree. The motion to close, guys. I second. All right. Motion by George, second by Peter to close the hearing. Um and and I just want to say this once and I'm not going to say it again. After we close the public hearing, we're not going to hear from anybody in the public or the applicant. So the motion has been made to close the public hearing. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Um, and for this, uh, I will beat Peter as the alternate because he was here last time. Uh, Paul was not. That probably makes sense not to seat somebody who wasn't on the commission for the <laughs> for part of the public hearing. Um, does somebody want to try to make a motion or do we want to uh, can have a conversation a about what the motion might look like? I could make a stab at it. Tony, if you want go to ahead. Point. Good luck. Sure. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, with regards to that issue, which is what I was concerned about, uh, this, this application has, has posed a number of uh, rather you know, complex issues and questions that have ranged uh, all the way from site planning, architecture, parking, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, I just wonder if uh, uh, it might be possible to, uh, to move to uh, uh, approve the question and then uh, uh, allow Peter to delineate an, uh, a variety of uh, prospective amendments based upon his understanding and notes that would uh, elaborate on uh, uh, on the approval, so that uh, all the appropriate issues uh, might be might be covered. Um, I don't uh, I don't Tom, think I, I could I noticed, ma I make too. make the motion uh, that would be as comprehensive as, as uh, someone who's probably taken the notes who has all the documentation in front of him and, and so forth. So I, I welcome, I welcome that. I have 13, Tom, I have 13 notes in my thing, and I, I know Peter always loves to enhance the quality and integrity of my verbiage. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll go with you. <laughs> Mr. Oh, Chairman, I, I yeah. would I would I would follow the leadership of Mr. Homeki then in this case. Hope I'm not yeah, we can at least No, we can we can at least start. Okay. Well I'll make the motion to approve application 3021 Z for Hartford Brewing a special permit. Um, inclusive of outside dining with the next 13 uh, items. Number one that the site plan be accepted by the town engineer as submitted in tonight's review. Number two is that a lighting plan will be submitted and accepted by town staff. Number three is that the outdoor patio and fencing, which will be at a six foot high limit, will only, uh, only be on the applica applicant's land. Number four, that a signed uh, with agreement with Hart Seed will be submitted to the town planner. Um, and, and, and inclusive of uh, uh, submission of a parking management plan as discussed tonight. Uh, number five is that no outside music will occur. Number six, the second floor will be uh, vacant and will remain vacant under this approval. Number seven, that a review by the HDC uh, will be required if requested by the town planner and the appropriate authorities. Number eight, that the building code will follow building inspection guidance inclusive of, inclusive of interior and exterior repairs, inclusive of the corning, cornice and window repair, as well as the sideline concerns. Number nine, the landscaping plan will be submitted as required within the emails and correspondence by the town planner and the engineering. How they did include something on the site plan. Number 10, 
that the hours of operation will be from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Number 11, that the handicapped parking plan will be reviewed and accepted by town staff or a letter of agreement for the handicapped parking will be agreed upon with the town staff or the town council. And uh, I think that's it. I thought I had 12. But those are the ones that come to mind. Peter, I don't know if you have anything else we should add. Well, you, you did have 12 because you had two different parking conditions. Uh, I would suggest number 13, which is um, grant the parking reduction uh, request uh, as specified in the village business district zone. So that would be 13. And you did well, because I got that's the last one I had. Do, do we have to include the landscape waiver? That's right. I did. That was one other tweak. He talked about the landscaping, but he didn't mention the waiver. So that was number 10. So uh, there were two waivers, one for the number of trees and one for the buffer. Exactly. I did have that number. Okay. Yep. Uh, Tony, could, could I uh, just uh, ask a couple questions on two of them? Of course. Well, can we get a can we get a second on that first, and then we can I'll talk second, about it. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Tom seconds. Go ahead, Peter. All right, thank you. Uh, it seems to me that uh, this handicapped discussion is too vague. Uh, I personally don't like the idea of approving this with something in the future that may or may not occur with the town. Uh, it should stand on its own merits in my mind. And when I asked the question, where could you have put a handicapped um, uh, parking location? And the answer was, well, we, we could have put it in the back, but we, we would have to forego two uh, parking spaces. Well, that's, that's just a condition of, of the site. Uh, if, you require a park, if you require handicapped parking, you have to accommodate it on the site. Uh, I don't think it's it's going to be a problem for anybody to go down that sidewalk and go to the front. It, it's, it's all flat. Uh, I, I've seen situations in other buildings where uh, sometimes the handicapped parking is as far where it's easily accessible and as flat because that's the condition of the site. So that's that's what this site allows. So I, I would be in favor of all you said, but I think we should consider uh, requiring that a handicapped parking space be placed in the back. Uh, now, in the future, if the town does go ahead and do something in the front and uh, Mr. Kerr can, can get an agreement with them, uh, he, he can certainly come back to us and say, listen, I, I wanna get rid of this parking space in the back. And, now I got a situation, I've worked out something with the town in the front. So uh, I'd be more than happy to say yes, when that is a reality. But, but today it's just too vague for me to, to say, you know, we, we, should, we should allow that argument as part of this approval. So I would prefer if we, if we insist on having a parking space in the back. I did have a reading note on my site plan, Peter, that they did acknowledge up to two places in the back. So I'd be receptive to modifying my, uh, my motion. Okay, great. The second thing I just want to, to bring up to everybody, this, this is just my opinion. I, I do think that um, this activity, this business is gonna do well, I, I really do. I, I, I don't doubt at all that he's gonna fill the space inside uh, and the tables and the bar and probably have a lot of people standing around. And, I wish him well on that. I, th I think that that's that's going to be good for him, uh, and he's, you know, bringing something to the town. So to 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 add all that outside activity is just too intense for my taste, especially when he's requesting to use town property for I don't know three or four tables, something like that. If you look at the site plan, there's just a couple, three tables, and he's taking the fence and putting it essentially on the sidewalk. 
I think it's a detriment to that corner to have a split rail fence essentially on the sidewalk on town property. Uh, a buffer would would be better. Across the street, there's the a motion, buffer. The motion doesn't have them on town property. The motion has, I would think, a condensed site plan. And I do agree with you. I think he's going to do really well. I was hoping Lambruni Winery would be. <laughs> But uh, that's another story. But the motion is to keep the uh, the fence on his on his parcel, not on the town parcel as of today. Okay, I I, I must have missed that. My my uh, my bad. Sorry, I, I didn't hear that in um, in your motion. So I'm you okay are, with that. So not on the town property then. Is that correct? He's not going on town property. Okay. No. All right. All right. I was concerned that's the about it. In front of yeah. Yep. Yep. All um, right, so so with with that, I sorry I missed that. Then then my only uh, point is, I, I I think we ought to insist on that handicap parking in the back. I'll accept that, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I I don't know. I guess I want to want to think about that for just a, a second. You know, I'd rather maybe suggest approaching it from the other side that we'll go with what Tony has suggested. But that if you know if the handicapped parking space hasn't materialized, you know, within two years and there's no plan to do anything, then you know, have it put into their parking lot rather than forcing them to basically give up two of the six spots um, out of the gate when there is an, an, a, a realistic expectation that, that something's going to be done to fix the situation, you know, on the town property. I mean, I, I definitely understand Peter's point about not, you know, not buying an argument for a future date, but I, I don't want to force them to, you know, basically give up some of the extremely limited on-site parking to accommodate something that may be moved in a relatively short I'm period of time. Be accepted by town staff for a letter of agreement with the handicapped parking to be approved by town council. I could put a two year statement in there if Mr. Limbruni would accept that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I tend to agree with what you're saying with regards to the handicapped parking. I'm, I'm extremely sensitive to the issues of people with uh, disabilities, but putting the that requiring that park can be put all the way in the back when the main entrance and the access is going to be in the front, uh, it seems like the, the most reasonable thing is to expect that to be resolved when uh, the, uh, the town does its improvements. Um, so to possibly overcome the, the, you know, the, uh, the potential for controversy here, um, I would think that maybe if we put a, a you know, uh, a, a a deadline for fulfilling the handicapped parking requirements so that would allow, you know, things to happen, hopefully naturally without that becoming a, a forced feature to the requirements of the, uh, of the applicant until it's definitely certain that there's no other way of, of meeting those requirements. So perhaps put a, a deadline of, of say, uh, Offer uh, say Six December thirty first of twenty twenty four to fulfilling the handicap parking requirements on onto the conditions uh, for the application. I I guess I'm okay with that. The the only concern I have is that we have the ability tonight to put in place handicap parking, and you know it, it's a requirement and. You know, handicapped people need the ability to, to access space like this. You're, if, you're absolutely if, correct. If it doesn't happen uh, within a period of time, what power does this board have or how are we going to get that done? I, I, I just don't understand. It's like we're kicking the can down downstream here. I, I don't see it as kicking the can. I see it as assessing the need over a period of time and then doing and then making the decision 
when we have like actual empirical evidence that we need one. Okay, so my question is, how do we enforce that in the future if it doesn't happen? We put a time how does, limit. How does that occur? Stipulation. We put a stipulation as a time limit. Okay, so if it doesn't happen right. within the time limit, what happens to this application? Yeah, he's issued a well, no, an then, enforcement order and uh, required, um, you know, can be subject to fines and is required to come back to the commission. So yeah. there are mechanisms in place for us to enforce your conditions. Okay. As long as there's some teeth to it, then I'm okay with it. I think the reality is the town engineer is recommending, you know, that that first stall there be converted to handicapped. Uh, he, he wants it there. He has some say over what goes on within the public right of way. So I'm pretty confident uh, that in, you know, relatively short order uh, that this handicapped space out front will uh, materialize. And the, uh, just to be clear, uh, the costs are not the obligation of the town. At, at this point, they're the obligation of the applicant. And if the town can help, we will certainly consider ways to do that. But it's not our obligation. It's the applicant's obligation. Just okay. make sure he does it, Peter. Yeah. He feels yeah. So, so, Tony, I, I, I guess I, I can agree to, uh, to putting a time limit, as you suggested, if you want to modify it as such. Rich, two years from the approval, Joe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Dean, we agree to amend the uh, motion. I wouldn't concur with that. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chair. May I? Uh, yes, sure, Joe. Thank you. So. Um, I mean, let me just say in an ideal world, I'd be a lot more comfortable if you, given that there's capacity for a pretty intense indoor use with 170 people, you know, it would be nice if we could see how that goes and maybe deal entirely with the outdoor component later. I don't know if people are receptive to that, but I'm going to assume there might not be a consensus on the commission for dividing it like that. And if we are going to allow the outdoor dining within the property lines, I'm gonna suggest that on Sunday through Thursday nights, just Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the outdoor area be cut off at 10 p.m. I think that would be helpful perhaps to some of the neighbors with school-aged children who, you know, those are school nights, they gotta get up uh, the next night, whereas Friday and Saturday, you know, go to 11. That's just one suggestion. And then another, another one is, you know, can we, uh, should we be addressing that uh, there shouldn't be any use of the outdoor area, you know, essentially by standees, you got to be, you got to be seated, but we don't want to have, you know, a group of 125 people packed in outside. So, you know, seated, seated usage, basically, those, those are my Two thoughts on the on the patio. I would agree on that. Yeah, all about adding that, Joe. But when I looked at the way the site plan was, my estimate is that we're going to cut him down to about a third of what he was originally requesting. If the town gives him uh, the easement rights, as he'd have to pay in addition to. So um, I could be wrong, but it looks like it'll be about a third of what he expected. Um, and yeah. I don't think we're approving anything with TVs for World Cup soccer outside either. I couldn't tell Tony because on one of his drawings, and it was hard for me to figure it out, but on one of them, it looked like it was only I like 20, the I like 20 the seats. I like the idea of uh, Sunday through Thursday okay. being closed down at 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. I think that, that's reasonable. I'm not a huge fan of the seated only. Like that just, to me... I don't know. It's like if I'm like standing and there's only like three people there, am I in violation of that? Like that, that just seems weird. Like, I don't know. Like it, it just, I, I feel like it's, I feel like it's unenforceable. I feel like it's a difficult thing to actually apply as a stipulation and it might be a little. Uh, a better way to, a better way to say it is, you know, drinking and eating, you know, you you're worried about teammates. you're worried about capacity you like so right. i mean right. you know if but we already have capacity as part of the application right so 
saying oh. that like you know if you're standing you're over capacity on the outside so to my in my opinion it seems uh kind of moot yeah i mean it doesn't sort that doesn't happen at lucky lose it's basically all <laughs> tables but again here i can't i can't easily figure out from the plan if there's room to jam in 50 people standing around drinking beer so that you know that's my point you guys However you uh, you know however you feel about it, I th I think the hours is is important. Hopefully that's acceptable to to um, Tom Dean as the seconder. And then I guess the only other thing I'll mention, Peter, is you had I think you had made clear earlier that if for whatever reason the parking agreement with Heart Seed were to be terminated, not just because the term expires, but you know Heart cancels it because they're going to sell and redevelop the property or something our waiver of parking is is premised on that agreement so he'd have to immediately come to us either with a replacement source or do something but i think it's important that it just be clear for the record that without such an agreement or equivalent agreement you know he's he's really not in compliance with his approval do you it's, want that as a condition of town yeah, I think it's I think it's helpful to clarify it because it's part and parcel of their, you know, proposed uh, parking reduction request. So yes, that, that should be clarified in there. Just add it to your waiver of parking condition where you say this is premised on the parking agreement, you know, or functional equivalent remaining in place for the duration of the approval or something like that. Yep. And. Uh, oh. Very reasonable. I did have the hard seat agreement to be uh, under the town planner's review in concert with the parking management plan, but yes, definitely uh, had that. I'm wondering if anybody has any thoughts and ideas. I, 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 I just can't think of something uh, to address uh, what we heard from uh, across the street that, um, you know, Art and John are very concerned that there's going to be spillover into their parking lot. They're not going to be able to, to you know, control it. Um, they'll have to spend money enforcing it and so forth. Is there anything we can do as a commission uh, for that fact, even, even on, on the street itself, to, to make sure that, you know, there's no big parking infringement on that street or across the parking lot? Anybody have any thoughts? I've been trying to figure something out. I just haven't come up with anything. Mr. Gillespie, what do you think? Well, you know, the, uh, short of putting up no parking signs in certain spots in front of the residential homes or, or those kinds of things, um, you know, the residents can uh, petition the town to, to do that. Um, but I, I don't, we wouldn't be able to distinguish between patrons or employees of a village and or the other tenants in that building and folks who were going to the brewery. So I don't think it's something that um, is practicable. Um, they, they do have, and I have seen this, they do have a, a gentleman who hangs out there and tries to enforce the uh, parking lot parking. There's some signs there that it's for certain businesses only and, and that kind of thing. And there is a gentleman who I've seen out there who, um, you know, they use to, to enforce that. Or, or at least keep his eye on it. So, um, yeah, it's private property. So, I mean, they can, you know, they have certain, if they put, put up the right signage, they can have people towed and they can enforce their own, you know, private on-site parking arrangement. So um, that's not something we can, we can get into. So um, unfortunately, as he indicated, he said he's had this problem for 40 years. So I, I'm not sure this business is going to, you know, make it any different uh, or, or make it worse. I, I think it's really going to be us working, continuing to work with, um, you know, the, the brewery owner to make sure he's doing all that he can to encourage people to park uh, in the other spots. And the one thing we didn't discuss is, uh, although there's no agreement with First Church, all of that parking, they don't necessarily have a problem with the public using, uh, but they just don't want it advertised, promoted, and that kind of thing. So I think over time, the word will get out on that. So if there is parking issues, people will tend to gravitate, you know, to use the first church uh, parking lot, which uh, by my understanding is okay with the church as long as it's not officially promoted. 
I'm not sure that answers directly the question, but just my two cents on that particular uh, issue. I, and I, and you know, once again, the on-street parking is public parking. It just it just happens to get heavily used by the village pizza uh, employees. So it seems to it seems to have worked. Okay. Can I uh, just ask ask another question? It, it's not clear to me, I guess, if we're limiting the applicant to his own property for the patio. You know, I'm, I'm not sure if we just draw a line ourselves and say, there go 25 seats. You know, he may attempt to try to squeeze things in tighter and, and so forth. So do we, do we need some kind of guidepost on this that, you know, we don't want him to squeeze 78 seats in his own property or that there's an overall number that shall not be exceeded uh, rather than just leaving it to being open-ended i'm i'm no. assuming i'm assuming we need a revised plan to make sure that condition is satisfied um okay. and the revised plan will obviously be the record plan in terms of what you know the number of seats are and i think i was trying to eyeball that myself but there's only so much room there i i don't know that they can squeeze in you know much more by using picnic tables and you know, the, the kind of layout that they had proposed. So I think that will kind of work its work itself out. Yeah, I mean, frankly, frankly, from my perspective, I guess I'd like to see a proportional reduction in the number of seats based on the land area reduction from what he originally proposed. I did, so I, I, I did put that as the number one issue because I think it is significant. And that's why I said it, yeah, it's yeah. accepted by the town engineer and the town planner. Okay, okay. so we, we'll require a plan for that. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Good. Good question. All right. And and um, Is that it, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to just to clarify, are are we stipulating then that? Monday through Thursday, going to change the hours to 10. Is that a condition? Yes. Yep. Okay. Very good. I agree with that. That's fine. And uh, did, the, did the applicant indicate whether there would be table side service outside? I thought he did. Yes, there, there would be. Okay. But, there, but there's not like a service bar or anything like that. Uh, he, he added a trash receptacle and a, I don't think he called it a service bar, but a, a weight station or a, there's a table, um, you know, that would allow, you know, I don't know if it would have um, cutlery and, you know, napkins and things like that, but there would be a um, small structure uh, over by the side stairs along with the trash receptacle to provide at least a, a, a station for the folks who are waiting on the tables out there. You know, this property is only paying $8,000 a year in property taxes. And if you look at the real estate and personal property, it could potentially be given the town up to 35 to $50,000 a year in property tax if he is successful. And there was also concern about the five houses on Church Street and the Church Street neighbors but I feel the applicant did give some good uh, quality uh, assurance that he was going to work closely to make sure that we don't have another situation like the Charles has anyway. So just wanted to mention those items. Yeah, I think one of the other things to bear in mind about the situation at the Charles is that, you know, going forward, by next spring, we're going to be operating under a different set of rules for, you know, outdoor dining, and it's not going to be the get out of requirements free card that, uh, you know, has existed under the executive orders and the, the legislation since a year and a half ago. I got to move the boat, Mr. Chairman. Well, I guess, does, does anybody else have anything else that they, they think in the way of, uh, you know, conditions or issues? All right, if not, 
Um, does everybody understand what the motion is and what, what all of the uh, conditions and stipulations are? Yes. There were okay. fourteen. There were fourteen conditions by my final accounting. That's correct. Yep. Should we uh, should right. we repeat the conditions? I think I, I think I got them. <laughs> All right. We'll be we'll be here till tomorrow if we try that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. If if, if nobody is un, nobody is unclear on on what it is that we're we're voting on, then not. I think we can proceed. So um, with that, all in favor of the motion to approve the 14 conditions, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right, motion passes. Mr. Chair. What is our pleasure? Do we want to... Uh, do we want to stop or do we want to do item three, two? I have to be excused, so good evening, everybody. I'm going to need to be excused as well. I'm going to need five minutes, maybe 10. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, it's just the moratorium, yeah, we'll, right? So it's yeah. the more it's yeah. the moratorium. The only the only uh, issue is if you and it, which is fine if you want to push it to the next meeting is you will have Luna pizza, you'll have Ocean State job lot probably again and then we had a new application so you'll have four things but that's just so you know um I mean, I mean like you know of anybody on the commission like delaying the moratorium didn't seem to be an issue for anybody yeah like, there's no there's no rush we have we did we have received some inquiries but um the state still you know that's lagging, what i, that's what I mean like, so even, yeah. even if it yeah. gets delayed after the next meeting and we table it it's yeah. like Yep. I don't think anybody on the commission is going to be all like waving their arms. Right. All right. So, um, well, do we, do we want to make a motion to, uh, to table this hearing and continue to, to the uh, November 16th meeting at 7 p.m.? So, so moved. moved. Second. All right. Motion by Joe, second by Ryan. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, next item, 2022 meeting dates. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Minutes from October 19th. Motion, Motion to approve, Mr. Chair. Second. All right. Motion by... George, second by Joe, to approve the minutes. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, staff report? Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything particularly pressing. Uh, you should know we, we, we filed a grant um, with the Connecticut DEP DEEP for the Connecticut Recreational Trails Program in a partnership with the City of Hartford and Riverfront Recapture to do some planning to figure out a way to extend uh, the Connecticut Riverwalk in Hartford South into uh, Weathersfield. Whether we get the funding to do that analysis remains to be seen, but just an FYI uh, that we spent some time the last couple of weeks putting that application together uh, with the hopes um, that we might get funding to uh, at least do a study to see what the uh, what the options and what the cost might be to do that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, any public comments? And we've received various items of correspondence. Note for the record. Okay. Is there anything anybody else wants to talk about before we? Uh, Turn into pumpkins here. Hmm. Move to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. All right. Second. Motion by Tom, second by George to adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thanks very much. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Okay, everybody. Oh, good night. Bye. Good night, everybody. Take care.
Good night. Bye.